Finds a way. Perfect. That's what you call a longer game upon perfect effects. Oh, I wonder how many people noticed. <laughs> Probably the same amount of people who listen to this podcast. Uh, Speaking seven? of which, hello, all three of you. Hey! Uh, and it's a new year, new cycle, you see. Oh, uh, okay. So, okay. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we're approaching our second anniversary. So what we have to do is renumber uh, so okay. that we can get new readers, uh, listeners involved. <laughs> um, but don't worry, we'll go back to the original numbering after, like, a year. Yeah. And then the trade paperback numbers will confuse people. Everywhere. Everyone, Every damn everywhere, time. confused. Uh, speaking of confused, hello. You will be. <laughs> you, you will be. Uh, my name is Chris. Mm, the smell of it, Johnson. My name is Matt. Mm, just for the taste of it, Diet Coke. Um, Watson. Uh, I like the um bit in there mm, as well. Uh, the second middle name's in double barrel. Yeah, <laughs> Diet Coke, Watson. Oh. I sold my soul to a corp- to the Coke company. You're such the a Coca-Cola Coke shill. company. You're a Coke shill. I'm a Coke shill. You're a Coke shill. You want to see my Coke nail? <laughs> Is it used to open cans? Yeah. <laughs> no. But what I do want to see is your list of contents uh, oh, in this fine pop culture podcast. Content page bursting at the seams! Mm. Before we divulge into them uh, entirely and let you know what's to come today, we'll just give you a heads up. Keep an eye, a tiny little beady eye. I've got a tiny little beady eye right now. On our Twitter account, Matthew, slightly small her eye. Yes. On our Twitter account, at Big Damn Cast, uh, in the next few days, you'll be listening to this at the end of the week, beginning... The uh, 11th of June, but so at the end of the week, you'll uh, get to know some information about next week, because next week is our 104th episode, yes. and our 104th episode is our second anniversary. Two years! Two years! Two more years! Two, Two more years! years. <laughs> uh, will the Russians meddle in our third year? Probably. Probs. <laughs> they meddle in every fucking thing else! Yeah, 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 yeah. Politics. So keep an eye out because next week our episode will be available to not only listen to but watch and take part in slightly earlier than usual because it's going to be live. The slightly earlier time of live! <laughs> Most likely on twitch.tv slash bigdamnstream but have a look at our Twitter account for details of what time and what day it's going to be starting. Yes. And you can be involved. You can talk to us live during the show. What a treat. Get on the old Twitch chat. I believe we've got the day set, haven't we? Yeah, well, yes. So, well, I will, we'll know for sure this yes. weekend. But uh, oh, I, I, pencil in. I think we can say <laughs> pencil in uh, Wednesday the 20th. Yeah, you're gonna have to stop watching. June. You're gonna have to stop watching Doctor Who on Twitch for a few hours. It'll probably be in the early evening. <laughs> no, watch us. Say. Yeah, probs. Yeah, um, Tokes probs. But yeah, we'll confirm the exact time on Twitter after this show has gone out. So yeah. look for us at Big Damn Cast on yeah. Twitter. And don't worry if you watch it on YouTube or listen on iTunes on the podcast app. You'll still be getting that on Friday. It'll it will, all be of going course, out be as archived, usual. yes. Yes, but it will also, if you're watching it on YouTube, have some visual bits. <laughs> visual goodies! Now, speaking of goodies, Graham Garden, I think, was the best of the three. <laughs> <laughs> but speaking of three, we've got three main contents have this we? week, haven't no, we? No, we've got f- four. Mm, I guess we can roll them into three. Speaking of rolling E3. things, uh, hey, see, there we go. Hey, that is hey, why they pay hey, you some bucks. Yes, uh, we have a couple of trailers <laughs> to talk about. I mean, you have to invoice for those. Yes, books. I, I don't and know then, who to invoice. And then do it though. several. They times. never give a forwarding address. Um, <laughs> we have trailers for the <laughs> new Halloween movie. <laughs> Halloween. <laughs> uh, That's not the Halloween. The Spider Verse uh, into no, Spider Man into the Spider Verse. Yeah. Um, we've got a bunch of stuff. For me, three to talk about. Yeah, well, which, which I'm is sort of as, talk at Chris about. Say, as we're recording, it's still sort of happening. But the main uh, stories, yeah, are, all the are announcements have happened. On. But with, there's more like hands-on stuff coming from the show floor and, and bits because more journalists are getting their hands on what's playable at the show. And we're not a gaming podcast exclusively, so it's just you know we're going to put a toll on maybe three in that world. Good um, shit we like. Huh? And then we're going to review the last week's big movie release, mm-hmm. uh, the blockbuster Jurassic World: A Fallen Kingdom, or as it's known in France, Jurassic World: Fallen Kingdom. <laughs> um, just put, just put an e on the end. Um, um, Jurassic yeah. w- Jurassic Park Five, basically the Jurassicening or Jurassic World Two. 
Jurassic Sharknado, Park 5. Sharknado 8. Jurassic Park 5, colon. Jurassic Park... Jurassic World 2, colon. Fall Lost Kingdom. World 4. <laughs> Lost World 4. <laughs> Oh god! Um, they should all be because Lost, Lost World, World Four. Lost World Four audiences nil. Because stick Lost, around to find out. Because <laughs> the Lost World wasn't Jurassic Park Two. It was Jurassic Park colon the Lost World. No, it wasn't even that. So technically, on release, it was the Lost World colon Jurassic Park. That's what I said. No, you said Jurassic Park colon the Lost World. Oh, sorry, the Lost World. L- technically, Lost World. Jurassic Park Three yeah. implies that we've missed a Jurassic Park movie. No, it should. It, they should all have been. So it should have been the Lost World colon Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park 3, colon, Jurassic Park. Jurassic World, colon, Jurassic Park. Jurassic, Jurassic World, World, colon, colon Fallen Kingdom, Kingdom colon, 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 Jurassic Park. <laughs> There's no naming conventions. It's all over the place. It's cool. Um, it's cool. We'll just create a hybrid movie that'll, that'll solve all of our problems. And then, of course, <laughs> we've got a couple of emails of yours to dither on about. But first... You are ditherers, aren't as you? As promised. You're our favourite kind of ditherer. Trailers. Hey? That we have impressions of. Do we? The Halloweens. Yeah, now, right, so interesting interesting story. Uh, you've never I, seen Halloween. I had never seen Halloween until about an hour before this podcast. That was, I was the story. At, I was at home and I was like, I've got a couple of hours before I have to go to Chris and I've got everything sorted for the podcast, everything prepped and I've got my bits of what to do today. I've got a couple of hours to go. What shall I do? Oh, I'll pop on now TV and see if Halloween's on there. The 1978 John Carpenter film starring Amy Lee Curtis. And you know what? <laughs> It was on there, so I watched it. Donald Pleasant's guest top billing in that movie. Yeah, in his big old uh, but beige he's Mac. Really not in it that much. No, compared really to not. Jamie Lee Curtis, who's twenty in that movie but still looks thirty. So she's twenty but looks thirty. Yeah, and nowadays and she's supposed to be eighteen. Nowadays she's like she's sixty. She's sixty, but apart from in the trailer for this new movie, where they've obviously aged her up a bit. It seems based on her hair choices. No, I and think the makeup. she's. I think that's her. She, she definitely. Oh no, it's no, no, it's her. But I mean, the way that they've, uh, the way she is in this trailer, ba- compared to how she has looked recently in other stuff, they it, like they've aged her up for this movie slightly. She's still sexy at sixty. Yeah, that's the thing, though. She's Jamie Lee Curtis. Even she's, even when they try to make her like a crazy serial killer obsessed cat lady, she is a she is a woman <laughs> who hit her prime at forty. Yeah, and is just she's just always looked that good. <laughs> it's true. She aged. Like a fine she Jamie aged, Lee she, Curtis. She aged into her body <laughs> and then just stayed there for a bit. Yeah, also, the kids are massive Street Fighter fans, so she also plays Street Fighter and has gone to Street Fighter events in costume. Okay, that makes me really happy. Who did she go as? Probably, M. Bison. Uh, probably, I don't know. <laughs> Vega. <laughs> I think she went as Vega, so she could wear a mask. With my claw. Yeah. I'll have to look it up. <laughs> it's my claw. I'm going to look it up. I'll, I'm going I'm to look it up while you give your impressions... Halloween, the original movie, is pretty good as well. It's mm. uh, it's it's weird to go back to because it's 40 years old and it kind of started the whole slasher genre. Yeah, so, it, it kick-started it, didn't it, really? And everything, of course, everything that came after, including the Halloween sequels, tried to one-up it. Mm. So it's remarkably tame by today's standards. There's barely any blood in it and it's not particularly violent um, by today's standards. But it's it's nice. It's a John Carpenter movie, so it's nice and tense. It's got a great score. And it's Jamie one, Lee it's one of those films that if you've seen it for the first time now, um, and you're sort of like, I suppose, a bit younger than our age, which, which most of our listeners are, either considerably so or partially so, mm-hmm. you might be like, oh, this is a bit. Mm. Like, my brother was like that the first time he saw Exorcist. He was like, that's a bit stupid, isn't it? And he's seen it since and gone, like, oh, no, I get it. Like, I understand why it has affected people the way it has and stuff. But you know, like you get a bit desensitized to certain things because they become more known movies. However, Halloween is still like that iconic mainstay simply on the basis that it it birthed that genre. Yeah, there'd been films about like masked killers and you know serial killers stalking people before. There had been slasher films, but the slasher movie as we know it yeah. was pretty much invented by Halloween. Like that's where it begins. And then the eighties popularize it. So many straight to video films that are based on the thing of the idea yeah. of a a slasher with a gimmick or a certain look um, and the teenagers that they're stalking. Well, it was it, obviously it, cinematic. It was the late like 70s in, into the Nightmare on Elm Street. Like, it was the mid-80s when that really hit stride because mm. you had all those mascot horror movies as I call them. Yeah. Um, that's a really good way to describe it. Uh, which I've I've written some stuff about that. I'm, your child's plays, your candy yeah. man's. Your, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm working on some stuff centering around a couple of those movies and franchises so hopefully that'll see the light of day. Before the end of the year, <laughs> um, maybe maybe now I mean maybe 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 um, so yeah it's it's an important franchise but it's not 
a critically acclaimed one. But I mean, its formula worked so well that people rejected its third movie. Yeah. Which I love. I love Halloween 3. It's not yeah. very good. Halloween 3 Season of the Witch? Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Which has no Michael Myers. Nope. And none of that stuff. And nope. it's supernatural and a bit creepier and spookier. Yep. And people went, Fucking no, bonkers where's the well. guy in the mask and the boiler suit? Bring him back. Like, it's totally bonkers. Have they ever tried to like loosely connect it with the rest of them since? No. Have they tried to like, retroactively go, the closest oh, this is the street is. where Michael in, grew up? In, or Hall- like in that. Halloween 3, you see on TV an advertisement for Halloween the movie. Oh, which is about Michael Myers, which some people reckon is like an in-universe like TV movie of the events yeah. that actually happened in that like Chucky in go, that like Chucky goes psycho and sees yeah. Chucky. It's just yeah, like yeah. wait, they're making a movie of this. Yeah. What the fuck is it's, going it's, on? It's implied, and also <laughs> um, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis has a couple of voiceover cameos in that in that movie as well. Not oh, okay. as Laurie, <clears> no, but like. Yeah. Um, by the way, to come back to my earlier comment. Yeah. <laughs> of of uh, Jamie Lee Curtis playing Street Fighter. Th- that is a picture of her attending Evo 2015 with her son disguised as, as Vega. Vega. She's dressed as Vega. Also, her husband, Christopher Guest, is there as Dr. Bosconovich from Tekken. <laughs> because, of course, he is. What? <laughs> That's Christopher Guest. Well, but it was like afterwards she revealed, oh, yeah, that was me. It was on Twitter, yeah. That's amazing. Um, as like a graduation present for her son. Yeah. Um, and she. <laughs> Apparently, she plays. Uh, more Street Fighter than you will ever know to quote her and she mains Kami oh fair enough <laughs> so holy shit see I fancy her more now That's... <laughs> I know right um, oh my god Jamie Lee Curtis is cool um, <laughs> anyway god, yeah. do you want you know, do you know, uh, do you want, you know what I want to watch now I've not watched it forever True which... Lies yes oh, I was yeah. going to say the uh, James yeah. Cameron movie it's not on Blu-ray yeah, I, I, and it's hard to find on DVD yeah. it's out of print That's mental a lot of 90s uh, sort of movies are out of print or hard to find on Blu-ray um, like it took me fucking ages to find Last Action Hero. But why would studios I'm... not pump them out? I don't know. Especially it's a James Cameron film. He's not like got a load of them. He's fair. He's fair. Maybe, he's maybe, not... maybe it's some really touchy he's liberal, not exactly liberal publishers who are like, yeah, but he was a Republican governor, so we hate him. We're not going to put his stuff uh, out. Probably not. Uh, shut but, up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> shut up. Uh, yeah, but he's a Republican with apparently a heart. Shut up, crime. Um. Yeah, that is a great movie as well. Halloween, dark though. Halloween is <laughs> the original movie is pretty cool, and I I can't say anything about the sequels. I remember Halloween H two O H H twenty twenty years later. H two O, but yeah, the twenty the twentieth one. Why is it called H two O if it's twenty years after Halloween? Why isn't it H twenty? Because it looks like H two O as a logo, and they thought that was cool because it was That's, the late it was no, the late nineties. It was marketing was eighty thousands, I think. Maybe I can't remember. All, all I know is around that time people were obsessed with like the logo. I think it had a new metal soundtrack. Doing certain so th- yeah, it was, it was a, it was a post Scream trilogy film anyway. Yeah, it might be mid Scream trilogy actually. Oh, maybe. Um, I mean, like toward the end of toward the end of the nineties, the slasher genre got another boost because things like I know what you did last summer and things like yeah, that. Yeah, uh, that that early um, wave of, of late nineties, early two thousands slasher movies, which was sort of inspired by slash informed by Scream slash uh, informed by Scream. <laughs> And, um, it's weird how Scream the Scream stuff. was sort of a look at that genre and a kind of homage to it and a piss take of it and, and what not mm. by, by a horror master who had started one of the slasher franchises himself yeah and yet Scream then inspired a whole new generation of straight face no we're doing this seriously slasher movies uh, H- <laughs> H- H2O or H20 I'm going to say H20 I don't care if it's H2O cover it uh, is was 98 so definitely a new metal soundtrack. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So, so we've had a lot of Halloween movies, and, and then um, Halloween Resurrection was after that as well. Resurrection was 2002. Then we had the two Rob Zombie films, the, the Rob Zombie remake and the sequel to that. Yep. Yeah. Um, and now, as we're talking about it, because the trailer came out this week, we have a film called The Halloween coming out this October. It's not called The Halloween. No, called... The Halloween. <laughs> the Halloween. The new Halloween movie. Halloween. It's the northern one. Halloween. 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 It's like that. It's, it's Halloween. Like that movie. Forever. Like my movie. The Halloween. Halloween. Um, Halloween 40th anniversary special. <laughs> Hosted by the ghost of Vincent Price. 
<laughs> Hello! Welcome to our Halloween Hello. special. Welcome to this Halloween special. Cheesy, crazy. Cheesy. If you've, if you've never watched the, the four SNL sketches where Bill um, Hader plays Vincent Price hosting like a Thanksgiving special, and they're wonderful. Fred Armisen is Liberace, and it's just the oh, most God. obvious jokes you can imagine, but it, how white his teeth appear in the black and white, and the way his <laughs> hands are just sort of like marionette playing the piano. Of course. More than makes up for it. Um, anyway. Halloween. John Hamm as John the F. Kennedy. Halloween. John, uh, John Hamm as John F. Kennedy. Right. And then in another one as James Mason. It works. What he does in his private life is his own business. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so Halloween was coming out uh, this October, and it was long mooted about a couple of years ago when it was confirmed it was entering production. People were like, oh, we'll remake again. Like another Halloween remake. This yeah. will be the second, because we have, and it's still in production in some form at the minute. I don't know if it's going to be a movie or a TV show, but there is another Friday the 13th remake on the way sure. in some form. Sure, why not? So people were like, great, they're doing again, it. Again, with... another series I've not seen any of. Really? A, a bunch of them are on Now TV. Oh. But the remake of the first one yeah. is on Now TV, but not the first one. Yeah, the 2009. And then all the sequels. Yeah, the 2009 remake is dreadful. Yeah, I hear because it. Because it because it forces the iconography of the series into the first film, whereas none of that exists in the first movie. Yeah, it builds up as the films go on. By number three is when you're getting your hockey mask and all that shit. Oh, I want um, a hockey mask. How, yeah, Friday the Thirteenth, the first one, and. I think I've seen the third one. They're really good. Um, and I've seen Freddy vs. Jason, which is stupid but fun. What about Jason X? I've not watched I've that. I've never seen Jason X. But I remember I'm it morbidly out. curious because it does follow the whole thing. of it, it, it Well, was, it was one of our sequels, he's in the big city. The next sequel, it's in space. It, it, it was part of that late 90s, early 2000s slasher revival. Yeah. Leprechaun, Leprechaun not only went to the hood, Leprechaun yeah. went to space. Went to space. Um, oh, yeah, so geez. we thought, oh great, Halloween remake another have remake again why what's the point no turns out they're just committing that really annoying crime of having the same name as the movie it's a direct sequel to this is a direct sequel to the first halloween this is ignoring all the others which yeah. means we'll probably get even, a really confusing box set when even, it comes out on dvd and blu-ray even halloween 2 which is apparently set directly after halloween 1 i.e the same night yep so it ignores that it one ignores that this is a Although, sequel to halloween danny mcbride who's involved in it he's also a co-writer yeah. yeah he's also come out and said that the, the script does acknowledge the others in some way okay but it is essentially a direct sequel to the first one yeah the film the film is meant to be enjoyed as a double bill with yeah. the original Halloween so I, I would imagine that it sort of broad strokes goes that yeah some mm. of that stuff kind of happened in a roundabout way um, but obviously not anything involving Laurie because she makes the point in the trailer that she's been waiting for him for four years yeah, so and that's the, cool latest sequel, the latest sequels, nothing to do with anything. But yeah, it's a direct sequel so much in the Jamie Lee Curtis is back. Uh, the actor who portrayed Mike, Michael Myers in the first one yeah. is also playing him in this one. What's his name? I'm look um, alongside uh, a stunt performer who's performing the slightly more rigorous stuff. Yeah, because I, I was watching the first one today. There's four different people who mm. play Michael Myers in that first film. There's yeah. the six-year-old one, the adult one, the shape... Yeah, it's, it's, and then it's, the stunt one. It's I believe the actor who played the shape. Yeah, it, it's the guy who's reprising the role, um, which is interesting because that means again they've gone like, look, if this can be a direct sequel, we want the guy who moves like the original, not because it's an imitation performance, but because it's the guy. <laughs> like, get in yeah. the boy the suit, mate. It's, it's Nick Castle who is who only has five roles. This new Halloween being one of them, and yeah. the original Halloween as the shape being one of them, um, and. But he's also he's more a director actually. He's directed a bunch of stuff. He directed the Last Starfighter. Really? Yeah. Oh shit. This and, sounds, this oh, and, like... and the 1993 Dennis the Menace. <laughs> Fucking hell. And Major Pain, the Damon Wayans movie from the nineties. Really? Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> oh, that is oh, oh man, Major Pain is terrible. <laughs> It's Don't awful. tell him that. He might come and attack you, boy. Blair, Blair. I'm a vampire, Blair. Blair. Reason, this is what we do, Blair. <laughs> so, yeah. Blair. Yeah. Um, it, this is happening. Impressions, especially now that you've watched the first one as freshly as today. Looks pretty good. It does, Famous right? picture of Nick, of Nick Castle on set of Halloween. Oh, that's really cool. Um, no product placement whatsoever. No. Um, he... It, I, I, I like the idea of and it kind of it's kind of the only movie it's kind of the it's the movie you can only kind of make 40 years after the fact of 
this woman having lived with what happened to her for 40 years she's been carrying this spent her life waiting for him to come back just securing that knowledge that he's gonna come back because the original Halloween ends on a cliffhanger yeah you know there's there's a a great cliffhanger mm, as well there's a moment in this trailer where like the prison bus seemingly kills over or whatever and the prisoners get out yeah the way it's done and the way the other character is reacting with it implies she's possibly done it herself like because Mm. this is her chance to get rid of this thing that's basically haunted her mind for the last 40 years like I wonder if that's where they're going to go down the route of like she's no she's no different from him she just channels it differently now yeah do you know what what I mean she's been through yeah Um, in a similar way to the way uh, Cult of Chucky maybe played with the idea of uh, like legacy, legacy, uh, legacy, legacy killings and Andy. Andy. Yeah, yeah, that really freaking brilliant opening where he just gets the head out and starts yeah. torturing it, and it's sentient, and it's the head of the OG. But yeah, interesting. Ooh, wheat. It'd be interesting to see where they go with that. Speaking of seeing where they go with it, that segue only half worked. Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. They're going to go into the Spider-Verse. It made made a terrible, terrible mistake last week by releasing its trailer like the night after we recorded the episode. Bastards! So don't do that again, guys. Um, But, God, I can't wait to see this movie. Looks alright, doesn't it? That's beautiful. This is our second trailer. This is our first full trailer. I love the animation style. Love the voice. Love the voice cast. The voice cast is great. The animation style is absolutely stunning. CGI treated through the prism of hand drawn in terms of technique and pacing, yep. which is giving it, like you said, it's giving it the sort of quirky stop motion like edge yeah, to it it's all. Like, it feels like it's missing frames. The colors in a good the, way. The colors and the focus pulling between the background and the foreground, yeah. everything looks amazing. The goblin looks interesting. Can't wait to see what they're doing with that. I love the the, the sort of slightly schlubby down on his look version of Peter Parker yeah which is I mean you know the old Parker look yeah, like, I, I love it's that. nice to see where that goes we're love getting it. two versions of Peter this year that are the older Peter who's who's been doing yeah. this for a while and this one it's even got a bit grey in this one it looks like, like it. it looks like he's got I a bit grey I thought that might just be the, the, the colouring but I thought it was I, I, think, I think they're aiming I mean to be fair even if this Peter's like 29 He's going to be going grey after the shit he's done. Yeah. Like, so that makes sense. And I like the fact that, I like the fact that there's obviously some kind of, the trailer sets up that like in your universe, there's one Spider-Man. Here, it's kind of the same, but a bit different. I mean, to the point where like a a, a bus drives through the frame and you see what's blatantly a Coca-Cola advert, but it's got a different name. Yeah. And it's just like, subtle ways, it's basically saying to you, this is, this isn't the, and it's, by doing that, it's almost acknowledging that, Oh, that other one that's in cinemas. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's that's, that's, that's not this, but that is a thing. Which is nice, because it's like, so this isn't part of the MCU, but it also will not contradict anything that's in other movies, and because it's a different storytelling medium, you'll just accept, oh, this is a different Spider-Man story. Do you think it's set in the Venom universe? Ugh. <laughs> Oh, um, God. But Miles looks amazing, and the variations on his costume over time look really cool. Yeah, the spray painted red on red Spider Emblem on the yes. black. Yes, yeah. love, love it. His dad's his dad's a much nicer person than he is in the book. Yeah, but it works because those moments in the trailer are a couple of the best moments. Yeah, um, Spider Gwen, Spider Gwen at the end, implying we're going to see more than just the two central Spider Man characters. Like we are going to go Spider Verse. In a, in a bigger, more elaborate way. Give me Spider UK. It looks like Peter's got like at least a base of operations because ah. there's like three costumes in a in a unit. I want Spider UK. Mm-hmm. I want Spider Man India. I want... Spider UK is the punk one. Yeah, he's not a punk. Spider Punk and Spider UK oh, are different right. characters. Because you, but isn't, Spider UK isn't punk, is the... isn't punk written with an English like accent oh, yeah. into the yeah. yeah. Well, okay. Spider UK is the is the Spider Man member of the Captain Britain Corps. Who yeah, if he's, I think one of the first ones to discover what's going on in Spider Verse. Yes, he is. Yeah, and he sticks um, around for quite a lot of the story, yeah. if I remember correctly. Um, I want Spider Man India. Does he have Peter? Uh, uh, Pe- I cannot. Pe- Petro cannot, Carville, I think his name cannot is. Cannot remember. His costume's um, dope, though. But he's, yeah, dope. Um, I want um, Spider Man nineteen oh two. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, Spider Man Noir is definitely going to rock up. Definitely want Spider Man Noir. It, they, they probably won't give him a main role, but they'll chuck Noir. Spidey 2099 in there somewhere. Spider Man 2099? Want Spider Man 2099? Can I. Please? I want. I want. 
completely um, just obnoxiously right there and centre in a scene not tucked in the back of a thing I want at least one line of dialogue from a Maguire and a Garfield Spider-Man yeah right. do you know what I mean I, I get because uh, Lord and Miller have produced this so I get the yeah. sense that they would be able to break that fussy oh, you mean they didn't barrier get fired? a bit no <laughs> uh, then again they didn't direct it but like, hey. but like you know I, I get the sense they'd be the ones who could possibly break down that barrier and be like hey Andrew we know you had a shit time we know Sony are dickheads but we'd really like to do this joke would yeah. you be up for doing this line of dialogue yes yeah. great hey Toby yeah. how you doing uh, well, I've not got much going on to be honest I've been Spider-Man for a while do you want to say this line in here cheers man cheers um, but Miles looks like he's going to be really compelling and interesting uh, the Prowler is wearing a 616 like bright purple and green yeah but I'm There's loving it. purple and green best villain colour scheme it's true it's true that's why the Goblin in this is that's also why, purple and green that's why so many of, of Marvel's 60s villains are purple and green it's everyone's c- purple and green it's because the op- they're at the opposite sides of the colour wheel so they clash in a, oh, good, yeah. in a good way yeah and they really jump off the page. Yeah, it's why, also it's why, why, it's why Spidey's uh, Spidey eventually became not too 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 long into his run, bright blue and red. Because mm. again, like those colours clash, but in a nice way. And it, it's also why the fa- uh, the frightful four are purple. Yes, purple Sandman. Yeah, I forgot, I forgot about that. Yeah, purple Medusa, purple wizard. Because yeah, when Sandman joins the frightful four, for some reason he has like a costume. Yeah, it's, like, it's just what, it's what just the hell's his, going on. It's just his normal costume, but it's all purple. Yeah, but then eventually he gets like he has like, like a like, mask and a cloak and stuff, and he looks more like Mole Man. Oh, I've not seen that. Really? Oh, I've not seen that vision. Really, oh, a little bit further along, you'll see it. You'll be like, <laughs> "What the hell is going on?" Yeah, yeah. Shortly after that, he reforms and joins the Avengers. Yeah, and goes back to just being in his um, also his, his green his green um, long sleeve t shirt and jeans. But of course, my favorite member of the Fightful Four is is Pace Pot Pete. Although by that time, he's renamed as the Trapster, and yeah. he was also purple and green in his, in his early appearances. Yeah. And, Pace but Pot he Pete. also should still be called Pace Pot Pete. Because he's he the retroactively best don't they call him that now? Like whenever he does appear, they refer to him as Pace Pot Pete. And he's like, "No, I don't, I don't call that anymore. <clears throat> I'm the Trapster. Look at my goo guns. <laughs> I'm not Pace Pot Pete anymore. <laughs> Look at my squirty goo. I was in a rush. I didn't have time to think of a name. <laughs> Pace Pot Pete just I, nothing leapt out at me. I'm not. Yeah. I don't look like a mole and live underground. And I just okay. have to use my real name." My real name's Pete. I'm not. A, I'm not a hulking creature. I bet I've finally been catching up on the tick on Amazon. And, I've uh, only saw, seen the first half. Yeah, I, I, I'm still in the first half. But it's that bit where he's, uh, Arthur's been talking to the police. They're like, "What's your super name?" And he's like, "Arthur." <laughs> That's your super name. He's like, "Yes," because it's different from my real name. And they're like, "Right, okay, okay, <laughs> like, okay, oh, yeah." That's kind of yeah. dumb. Love yeah. it. Love it, love it, love it. I need to get on the second. I love how Overkill's finish. basically just Deathstroke but painted black. And, oh, and the, and his uh, <laughs> and his boat. Yeah, I've just got up to that. <laughs> it's really cool. Um, it's really cool. Um, it's pretty sweet. Let's talk. Spider Verse looks amazing. Spider Verse looks amazing. Let's talk about other things that look amazing. Um, E three looks. Do they clean it? This exhausting. Year? Do, do, do they brush it? it brush looks up? Fucking exhausting. It does. Um, and it's also starting a weird. I thought E three was a weekend thing. But it seems to have been a no. It's a, always a been, Saturday while it's a, um it's, Thursday thing. It's because they've started putting the press conferences earlier and earlier ahead of the actual show opening. So you get two right. days of press conferences. Oh, so the show itself is over the next days after the this. show itself started yesterday. Right? No, but, of course, because the press conferences before. no longer seem to happen at the convention half the oh, time anymore, do they? Uh, like, like Sony's this time move. was in a, a big, like, erected yeah. tent slash an EA slash chapel. EA's and yet they didn't they didn't like do some kind of weird Far Cry 5 late in the game no, DLC yeah. promotion tie in with it EA, EA Play um, isn't technically part of E3 because mm-hmm. EA are big enough to do their own thing <laughs> and dicks. for now um, so they are, they're the first ones like the day before the rest of the press conferences because it's technically not an E3 press conference yeah but they capitalise on the <clears throat> buzz of E3 yeah which is smart like if you were a smaller company you would tie in with that and yeah stuff. yeah like the, so, way, the way that Sony do their days of play sale the same week as E3, for example. Some good stuff in that. Yeah. Like, Can't afford me this year. I'm saving I might, up. I might finally pick up God of War, but then again, I might not. I'm, I'm saving up, but then I look at the VR. The VR starter pack is during days of play is 199 The VR which is the pack. cheapest I've seen the VR starter pack, which then justifies you spending that extra bit of money mm. on the play controls. A friend of mine got the, 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 the a VR over the, over the weekend. Yeah. It still makes me feel ill. That's it's very the, cool. See, that's my thing. It's very I've cool. I've played enough VR to know that it doesn't knock me sick, but I've not played a PlayStation VR game yet. It's really neat. Yeah. But I don't know that I could have one. Yeah. 
Yeah, I know what you mean. I also don't think there's enough there's enough experiences to draw me to one. If there were more games like Resident Evil Seven, I think I, I would absolutely because yeah, Res- Resi that... Seven's magical in that you know here's a game you can play it like this or like this. Yeah, yeah. and if and if one's making you queasy, switch back to the other one and, and it works. You can also you can play anything in it. It just creates a virtual screen. Yeah, but that would be yeah. weird. Yeah, so don't do that. Just watch your TV like a so. normal human. Um, like one so of the humans you read about. In no particular order. Let's go. Let's go into E3 stuff. E3 stuff stuff. Do you see like Disney? But yeah, I I fucking do. Oh, shouldn't swear. I've got good news for you. What the fuck? Kingdom Hearts three. Uh, is... The long-awaited Kingdom Hearts sequel. Oh my god, we're finally getting it this month. No, we're getting it next month. Nope. we're getting it in 2018. Nope. <sighs> but oh, getting it in January. Yeah, January yeah. 29th, 2019. January 29th, 2019. Allegedly. 19. Um, whether it'll make that date or not remains to be That's seen because this is true. fucking square after all and based on the trailer they're still not finished syncing up the no, English stuff or the sound effects, sound effects. Yeah. Um, oh the trailers are gross are you, I hate Kingdom Hearts trailers are so are you much. still interested in Kingdom Hearts yes and no yes for the basic visceral level of reconnecting with something that in my teenage years I was absolutely um, won over by yeah Yes, as a, as a Disney fan, wanting to explore those worlds, wanting to run around Andy's bedroom again in a better looking game than the PS1 Toy Story 2, which is still a fantastic <laughs> game, so much so that I downloaded it and it's on my Vita as well. Oh! Um, it's like, where are all these music themes coming from? Why do I have to find 18 tokens I, in impossible places? This is nuts. It's that, sounds like a, that sounds like a PS1 uh, platformer. It is wonderful and terrible and it, brilliant. Yeah. Um, but yeah, for that reason. Yes, because I do like my RPGs to be a bit more... Like, I do like my turn-based ones, but it's nice when you get the ones where it's hands-on, the fight mm. is happening in real time. Uh, although, based on how they do like shortcuts and things like that, it could be really frustrating, but whatever. We've got touch screens now. Maybe we'll have the option to play around with it. Maybe. On the controller pad, who knows? Um, and yes, just because as a fan of voice actors, I can't wait to hear all these voice actors reprise roles they've not played mm. for forever. Haley Joel Osment sounds old... And you know what? I mean, he sounds like a he sounds like a, a, a time is meant 30s. to time is meant to have passed. Yeah, since whatever the last chronological story with Sora in was to now, <sighs> fuck no. But they, but Sora just looks the same. Yeah, it's weird. That's the problem. So if they if they'd have, if they'd not been af- afraid to age Sora up slightly more, I don't think it'd be as weird. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, they'd be like, okay, he's older and his voice is like ropier. I think Ellie Dorsman's doing a damn good. A damn good go at making him sound like he's out the back of his teenage years. Yeah, but it just it does feel he's a young odd. man, at this and it's point also odd when you can tell teenager. which actors aren't the same. Like that's definitely not Dina Menzel as Elsa, no. um, but it is Kristen Bell as Anna. It sounds like is um, it? It's the guy who Johnny usually Depp? no. It's James Arnold Taylor. Uh, it's not been ah. announced, but watching the Pirates trailer. Um, that's James Arnold Taylor who did him in did Captain Jack in Kingdom Hearts 2 yeah and has played him in something else I'm not sure what but he's played him in another game has there been another Pirates World and another Kingdom Hearts game mm, since probably maybe but I've not played any of those so I'm not sure well, uh, I've Pir- got, Pirates I've got games Legend Jack Sparrow for the PS2 was the only Pirates game to get Johnny Depp to play I've him I've got good news for you have you? what? Huh? Hmm. If you want to revisit any of the other Kingdom Hearts, and exclusively on PS4, what? you can get all the Kingdom Hearts games in one big package. Really? Yeah, they're doing a set. There's a, there's a PS4 exclusive of Kingdom Hearts 1.5, Kingdom Hearts 2.5, Kingdom Hearts 2.8, and Kingdom Hearts 3. That's mental. Well, that's the thing. I bought 1.5 for the PS3 Yeah. Um, like six years ago when it came out, and it was really nice to revisit. And included on it is all the cutscenes... Uh, and whatnot from Chain of Memories, the Game Boy Advance no, it's game. No, it's the whole. It's the whole of Chain of Memories recoded. Oh no, I think that might be on the PS4. Um, no, no, it's 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 one. Oh, oh, it's, it's on, okay. It's Kingdom Hearts. The yeah, original Kingdom Hearts. Re, uh, for oh, the one point five version yeah. from um, J- Japan. It's, it, it's Kingdom Hearts. Chain, of, Chain memories. of Memories, and but it's the PS2 remake of that. Oh, that was made in Japan, coded. right? Yeah, it was never released outside of Japan, so it's a it's a full 3D oh. version of Chain of Memories. Right, then um, I've got 2.5, which is two, two remakes. This is all the cutscenes from another game. But basically, each of, each of the 1.5 things so far have been two full games and all the cutscenes from a third game. Right. Okay. 
Yes, because on, really... on the 2.5, I don't think it has the DS game, but it has the cutscenes from the DS game. I think that's in 2.8. Oh, fucking hell. That's what I'm saying, though. They've, there's... I'm going to look... Here's, gonna here, look here's the thing I'm not looking forward to about Kingdom Hearts 3. Um, the the lore is so muddy. It's muddy. so it's, on it's so muddied and confusing that um... even me, someone who played 1 and 2 when they came out and loved them, and played the... Um, I played the the DS one. Yeah, I even I'm like this looks like it's going to be so boring. Plus, revisiting one and two, I realised um, that I'm not a big fan of anime. Um, I don't hate it, and I love the fact that people love it. Yeah. But there's just something about the sensibilities and the pacing and the constant reiteration of how the characters are feeling and what they believe in. Mm-hmm. I find really boring. Do you know what I mean? And and there's lots of that in Kingdom Hearts. Like, and yeah. unfortunately, the earlier ones, you cannot skip the cutscenes. Because that yeah. cutscene is playing because it's loading something. Yeah. So, you have to sit there whilst they all talk oh. about, like, what's inside of you is the most important thing. And, like, two minutes of that. And all the slow deliveries. And mm-hmm. based on these trailers, that is back in abundance. Um. And I really hope you can skip cutscenes, which is really weird. Well, I shouldn't be saying that when it features characters knows? I like. It was just um, lots of... But also the fact that the cutscenes they showed in the... Because there was two trailers for E3, wasn't there? There was the Frozen-focused one earlier in the week, yeah. and then at the event they showed the Pirates-focused yeah. one. Um, and, oh, for Christ's sake, like... They, they basically clearly just showed the scenes where the majority of the lip-syncing had been done. And in some of them it hadn't. Like, you could see yeah, the lip-syncing yeah. wasn't finished. But they, that's what they were showing. So because of that, it was just moments. It looks cheap. Yeah. And none of the... I mean, the, the overall look of it is gorgeous. Like, um, Elsa running across the ice and her cloak yeah, and everything yeah. looks amazing. And, and uh, the freaking town from Tangle looks gorgeous. And Andy's room looks amazing. And, 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 and the Monster Laugh Factory and all this stuff. Like, the, the environments look stunning. But then you show those bits of cutscenes. Here's Kyrie and Axel, and Axel's just like, "You've done something different with your hair." And Kyrie's like, "Ha ha!" It's like this is your trailer. This is. The I don't sh- even know who the this fuck is Axel the thing. is. Exactly. I had to look up his name again because I know they've got Organization Thirteen and these the Heartless and there's the Nobodies, and I, don't, I have no fucking idea what's going on. Basic plot: of the first one was. There is a darkness that is spreading. It's known as the Heartless. Yeah, Billy and, Zane spreading the darkness. And as you. The Darkness believes in a thing called love, alright? It just listens to the rhythm. I'm, I'm seeing them live on Sunday. I saw them uh, a couple of weeks back. I'm uh, a, couple of months, a couple of months back. I'm really excited. They were really good. Like, I mean, I'm mostly, I'm mostly there to see Hollywood vampires, but like, knowing the darkness of the and They the were acts, really fucking good when I saw I'm them. I'm excited, man. man. They're really good. But so, like, there's a darkness growing, and, and, and as you learn more stuff over the course of the game, like the papers and the things you find, you learn of Ansem and the fact mm. that he was the one who was delving into this darkness and he gave his heart and all this, that, and the other. And the idea is that this darkness is spreading and is going to consume all known worlds. Yeah. So the way the world works is like each each world is its own like planet. And every... The galaxy is just full of these other planets, these other worlds that are other people and other places and everything looks different and sounds different and blah, blah, blah. And obviously they don't go past implying this in the game, but because they have the characters of Final Fantasy and the characters of Disney to play with, yeah. that's what they use to illustrate it. So you go to this other world, and you're suddenly in the freaking world where Beauty and the Beast exists. Yeah. And you go here, and you're in the Halloween realm of Halloween Town, and things like that. Um, uh, and, and sometimes you go to places, and a lot of this point in cast are Final Fantasy characters, but out of continuity of Final Fantasy. It's just because yeah. here they are. Just like the Disney ones are sort of out of continuity. Sometimes the levels are retellings of the movies. Sometimes they're different. Mm-hmm. La, la, la. Sometimes they're set after. Sometimes they're set after. And then in the next game, they're set in the original. You're like, what the fuck's going yeah. on here? Um, see well, Aladdin. Let, let me tell uh, you what's going on, Chris. But, but basically, like, Sora's been chosen for some reason to be the one to wield the Keyblade and basically lock each world, find, the, find like the keyhole, the access point to each world and close it off from the darkness. Defeat the darkness that's there and close it off, and the heartless won't be able to consume that world. Tie into it the fact that there is like seven princesses, and they're meant to be like the sources of light or whatever that could possibly stay back the heartless. Yeah. So, so some characters are being kidnapped as the story goes on. A bit tropey, but whatever. It's also just cool to see those characters interacting with each other. So it's like, okay, great, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and you've got your basic chosen one, but there's two sidekicks, Donald and Goofy, are trying to find King Mickey, who's who's. Trying to, save course. The, trying to save the universe and yeah. close off all the, the, the keyholes from the darkness. Um, but they're doing it themselves along the way all trying to find him. And eventually Ansem is revealed to be this person behind it all and they fight him and that's it. But Sora's mate 
like the, the tail end of it basically is Sora's friends Kairi and Riku are separated from him. Riku's brought into Ansem. He's like Ansem's vessel. Yeah. And then he's separated from that and he and Mickey go off into the ether to solve whatever it is in the other realms. And Kairi and Sora are separated like because Sora has to go one way. And that's how the first game ends. It's like... I've gone oh, fucking cross-eyed already. No, but even so, that's the most <clears throat> simplistic, for lack of a better term, one of the of the games in terms of its story. Yeah. That's when it gets crazy. Game Boy Advance game, Chain of Memories, is the direct sequel. Yeah. Following Sora, Goofy, and Donald. At the end of that story... But they have to do all of Kingdom Hearts 1 all over again. Pretty much. Basically. Yeah. In like a self-contained thing. I've got the original GBA Because by the end of it, you find out that they're they're sort of hooked up to a thing, and there's a character called Namine, and like the the young girl in the white dress, and they get like stored in a computer, and that gets rewritten. Kingdom Hearts 2 comes out, but after that, the... DS game comes out, which is like two, four, six, slash three, 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 three fifty eight over two days. Which the title is, that makes no sense. So it, the, in, the, in the in the one point five collection, it's one. It's Kingdom Hearts Final Mix, Kingdom Hearts Re Chain of Memories, which is the three yeah. D remake of Chain of Memories. Yeah, and oh, God. the and a, and a cinematic version of three fifty eight over two days. Right, that's what I'm thinking of. That we um, just reconstructed from cinematic uh, and stuff. And so, then so, Kingdom Hearts two so, point five three. Was it three five eight over two days? Yeah, that technically happens after Chain of Memories because the main character in it is Roxas, mm-hmm. who we then learn at the start of Kingdom Hearts two. You start Kingdom Hearts two as Roxas, only to realise that Roxas and his not his world but just him, yeah, are a simulation created to keep Sora safe because it's actually Sora in like and Donald and Goofy in like the simulation yeah. pods and then when they get out of it about an hour and a half into Kingdom Hearts 2 they go off and do their thing and it carries on and it's a genuinely kind of sad thing because for like two hours you get you get to know this kid because you're playing as him and then he's got to go and you're like I'm happy to see Sora back so we can carry on where we left off but oh this is so tragic mm-hmm. and then of course they released two thingy eight over two days to, to, to capitalise well, on that after the fact when you realise oh no Roxas wasn't just randomly dragged into it at the start of this game's narrative he had years of this stuff oh, so how long no. was Sora out of it and Roxas is involved with Organisation 13 who were then introduced in number 2 as this evil organisation that are behind it all so it's not Maleficent who's behind it all working for Ansem as the first game implied Organisation 13 are a thing and then there's another villain who by the end of number 2 you realise is just Ansem in another form but is a separate consciousness well, maybe that's oh, all expanded on Christ. in the Kingdom Hearts HD 2.5 remix collection, which includes Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix, Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep Final Mix, uh. and also a cinematic remake of Kingdom Hearts Recoded. And then, mm-hmm. and then, last year they released Kingdom Hearts 2.8 Final Chapter Prologue, yeah. which is a remaster of Dream Drop Distance, which is the 3DS game. Yeah. Um, Kingdom Hearts oh, X back cover. It looks like an X, but it's not a real. It's mm. not a real symbol. Yeah, which is yeah. a which is a cinematic um, that ha- basically fills in some of the events in the first game, and then Kingdom Hearts zero point two Birth by Sleep, a fragmentary passage, which is a, a new thing. A new thing for that release. Which takes it's place, like it's like a four hour campaign. Yeah, which it takes place after the events of Dream Drop Distance and Birth by Sleep during the original Kingdom Hearts from the perspective of Aqua. I didn't know Aqua the band were involved in Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> well, they're a Barbie girl in a Barbie much. world. But that but that's that's a game that the only reason that was enticing when it came out back in like what, January or whatever yeah. was that that portion was u- using the new engine and the new design for the upcoming game. Yeah, yeah. So it's like a preview of the upcoming game, basically. Yeah. But that when that came out it was a big indication that three was taking even longer to come out. Um, I mean, one of our episodes in year one was titled Kingdom Hearts 3 is Never Coming Out. Yeah. And I still feel like that, even though we know the date. I'm not going to be in a rush to buy it. It's coming out my birthday week, but there are two yeah. games coming out my birthday week, and one of them I'm slightly more excited about, really. And that is the remake from, remade from the ground up Resident Evil 2. Oh, yeah! Got um, a trailer for that in the Sony press conference, I think. We did. It looks gnarly. Real good. It looks not. Does it look? Does it look? Does it look um, gnarly? What's that word I used before that I used unironically and then afterwards felt wrong? Dope. There we go. <laughs> it looks dope. It's dope. Yo. Um, Last of Us Two got a trailer. Last of Us, Last of Us Part Two. Last Super part violent. Two. Also gay. 
Yeah, and nice less, less a trailer, more short nice, movie. Yeah, really. nice to see Ellie confirmed as uh, 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 at least bisexual, if not out and out lesbian. Which is hint, it's it's hinted at in the in the main game, and then mm. in the um, last in the what was the uh, DLC released for it? Um, uh, oh, left behind. Here's more val- yeah, which they, last, they, they did behind. release that eventually yeah. as a separate physical which is as well, a, didn't they? A, a prequel to The Last of Us with Ellie. And what is implied to be her girlfriend? Okay. Who is the? Who is the? They both get bitten, and Ellie discovers that she's immune, and her friend does not. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Harsh stuff. Harsh um, stuff. So yeah, it, it seems like she has another another um, girlfriend, and this is clearly set a few years after the first one. There's like a there's a community, a, a, a and, community and they're and... a dance, and they're at a bar. Yeah. And so there's some kind of community going on, and she's dancing with her girlfriend, and there's some, and then it flashes to. Some actual gameplay. Yeah. It looks stealthy and violent as fuck, and it looks gorgeous, and I can't wait to play it. Uh, also, yay, more gay characters in video games. Is Ellie the main Ooh. character as well? Uh, Ellie is... It, it seems to be that Ellie is the playable character. That is that is nice as well, because not many sequels... Uh, it uh, it I, could I, be not that Joel... Other studios would sequel it up in a way where yeah. it's like, oh, we need to introduce another version <laughs> of the character we had in the previous one, yeah. or bring that character in. In this case, they've gone. No, we're going to take the fan favorite character from the last game. We and heard... give her the spotlight. Well, she's not even just a fan favorite character. She is. She's as much a protagonist as Joel is. It's just that you don't control her for most of the game. Yeah. Well, well, um, jo- well jo- Joel's Joel's your eyes and yeah. ears in the original. Like he's the character you go in learning the most about. It and... would make sense thematically. Mm-hmm. It makes sense thematically for the second game to be uh, Ellie as the, as a playable character, especially because slight spoilers for the end of The Last of Us the very last part of The Last of Us has you switch control to Ellie yeah and then and then and then the, and yeah. then the game ends um, also it's not clear whether Joel is even still alive although Troy yeah. Baker has confirmed Troy Baker is in it yeah, yeah. he's involved in, in, in some capacity um, his voice was heard in the in the very first teaser for this um, but he might not be alive he might be dead they might him and Ellie might have had a falling out because, again, if you finish The Last of Us, you'll know that their relationship is left in a uncertain place mm. due to the events of that game. Um, although they do have a, a very strong father father daughter bond, seemingly. Um, there's other stuff going on there. Um, Maybe she doesn't so, like being a replacement for yeah, someone, though. So um, they've sort of parted. And... Yeah, and she's clearly a bit older and, and, and set on her own path, but she's also learnt a few things from Joel about the art about the art of murder. Murder. Sweet, sweet murder. I just hope that 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 uh, it isn't a case that she's hunting down her girlfriend's killers in the in the in the trailer. Yeah, I don't, I don't want it to be a bury your gaze moment because it looks like we might be getting one of those in Battlefield Five, mm. where it seems like there's two women on a bridge and one of them says "I love you" and then pushes the other one off. I hope that other one doesn't get killed. Yeah, I know what you it mean. Just, it yeah, just like, it's sort of. Can we? It's good. Can we get? Can we get more gay characters in games? And can we not get one of them killed off as like a let, let us ce- to the let, other? Let us celebrate yeah. it more before we start to sort of slide yeah. into tropes. Well, Last of Us Part Two looks really good. I'm I'm super excited for it. We spent way too long talking about Kingdom Hearts. Um, February twenty second. Everyone's pissed off about because there's like three massive games coming out that day. Oh, what games? Um, Days Gone. PS4, which is, is a, a zombie game. It's a yeah, it's a zombie game. Of course, it's a fucking with, zombie game with bikers, and it looks like these uh. massive hordes of zombies. Also, it's kind of like The Last of Us in that you spend more time fighting regular dudes for resources, and it looks kind of dull. We're living whatever. in a post Walking Dead world, that's why. Yeah, it just look, it just looks dull. Like it just looks, it doesn't look interesting at all. Zombie games. I don't know. Obviously, I said I'm excited for Resident Evil 2's remake, but like that's an exception because it's a remake of a classic. Yeah, zombie games do not interest me in the slightest anymore. Yeah, because there's so many of them. Yeah, um, like I was downloading Call of Duty Black Ops Three because it's part of days of play and the oh, yeah. event. Sony have black that up for yeah. free. For free, Sony so. gave everyone with PlayStation Plus Black Ops Three. Yeah, because so, go check it out. Because to cut to get some goodwill yeah. ahead of number well, four. Also, because Black Ops Four, if you pre-order Black Ops Four, you get the remastered classic maps that are coming to Black Ops Four for Black Ops Three as well. Right. So they're giving it you for so free. So ahead of time. Yeah. They've given it you for free out. and saying, hey, if you pre-order this next one, you'll get some more maps for the game we've just given you for free. Yeah, but well, as I started to do it, it gave you a choice of which half of the game it would upload. Oh, which okay. half of the game it would download yeah. quickest. 
so you could play one of them before the other and it had like multiplayer and zombies was what you had to pick oh so no campaign I've not been in it yet to see. Oh, be, there is be, campaign. Yeah, but, but, yeah, I, I, but don't, I don't know. Yeah. If, I don't know which side of that it was attached to. But it was just I, like I, I hear the. I, re- I, I read those words and I just went. I don't mind reading the word multiplayer here. People fucking love COD zombies. Mm. It's weird. The people fucking love COD, and I've never really understood it. Like zombies, I haven't played. Zombies made sense back when because I've, I've I've got Black Ops. It was a, that it was, was the only COD game I've like owned or kept. It was originally a hidden mode in World at War. Yeah. And it was fine in Black Ops because it was like a, it was on the main menu. It was like a bonus thing, yeah. and it was just an option to play some maps with that element. It's like, oh, this is kind of cool, um, like being in a zombie game with that you know realistic version of weaponry yeah. and, and things like that. Um, whereas um, after that, it became such a big thing and kind of a joke thing as well, half and half. Yeah, and they get people, more they get people like Robert, Robert Englund yeah. and Kevin Smith and, and Michael Rooker, and Michael Sarah Rooker, Michelle Gellar. And, and it became a thing, sometimes playing themselves, sometimes yeah. playing characters. And it's just like, what is this? I think the epitome of it was last year, World War Two Zombies. World War Two's version of Zombies was, again, like a six, seven hour campaign mm-hmm. with actors like David Tennant and stuff playing these mm-hmm. characters. But in a way where it clearly wasn't performance capture, it was just voice capture. And because the black, the David Ops... Tennant does not move like David Tennant, yet looks like David Tennant. It's really stupid. The Black Ops 4 <laughs> zombie stuff is in a completely new continuity from the zombie stuff that's come before. Oh, for Christ's sake. Wait, so there's a continuity to the previous yeah. episode? Oh, for God's sake. But it started out just as a fun... Oh, here's a... There you go. For a laugh, here's our game, but as a horror game. Yeah. That's That That I don't mind. That, you know, it's like an extra. Here's a couple of maps, and there's zombie maps. But people, people love chasing the popular stuff. Mm. Which, actually... Mm. Yeah. I was surprised yeah. I was surprised at this E3 yeah. that we didn't get Whoa. a Battle Royale Whoa. announcement for every single game as far as I'm aware the only game that we didn't know had a Battle Royale mode coming already yeah. that got it announced at E3 was Battlefield 5 which yeah. we everyone saw coming a mile off anyway yeah. so of course it's going to put Battle Royale mode in there because <sighs> stuff like Fortnite and PUBG is eating into the existing player base for COD and Overwatch um, and, and, and uh, Splatoon and... Battlefield yeah. <laughs> um, well that's so... the thing like Battle Royales have become the thing again over the last few years but yeah. some, some some companies are unfortunately focusing on that as now the main attraction well Fortnite is coming to Switch yeah but only the Battle Royale mode the, act- so the, the, the regular Fortnite as Fortnite started out of mm. the save the world thing of building stuff and, and zombie survival it's not coming to Switch no, just the Battle Royale It's mode. just the Battle Royale mode. Mm. Also, so. if you've played um, Fortnite on PS4 already, you cannot use that same account to play it on Switch. Yeah. Sony is actively blocking cross-platform play yeah. for Fortnite which on is Switch really, which from is PS4. a really bad move. It, every time this cross-platform thing has come up, with, for, with Microsoft, with PC, with... Uh, you can you can, you can cross you can cross platform play PS4 and PC. Yeah. You cannot cross fa- cross platform play Xbox One and PS4. Not because it's technology doesn't exist. It exists. But and one side is going. No. So it's Sony. Yeah. My, when Microsoft so have been asked about it, Microsoft have publicly said we're we're up we're up for it. But Sony's blocking it because ultimately you're encouraging each other's sales to do well. Yeah. Like that's what like do you know what I mean? Like people are gonna. Be happily do this, that, and the other. It's just silly. Like, just do it. I mean, think of it, like if you, if you get one, if you suddenly decide, right, that's it for the next gen. I'm getting the other, the other sort of company like flagship yeah. console. But I would like to carry on my IDs and logins from these things and blah blah blah. Microsoft are going, hey, if you don't want to stick stick with us, if you don't want to get whatever the mm-hmm. next iteration of Xbox is, want to get PlayStation. You know, that's fine. That's your choice. Fair enough. No bad feelings. You can still log into all that stuff on the yeah. next system. Whereas Sony's are just like, no, you should probably, you should probably just get the next PlayStation. It's like, guys, come on, like, be realistic. People yeah. are not obviously platform plays the way it go. You want to keep, people, but I'd forgive Sony a bit more on that. For example, if they were backwards compatible, at least. Yeah. Do you know well, what I mean? They're they're leaning into PlayStation now, which is a decent service, but. It being streaming based means that you have to rely so much on having good internet. If you've got good internet, yeah. if you've got good internet, yeah, it works really well. But you need to have good internet. Which yeah. A lot of America doesn't have. Yeah. Also, America has more data caps than we do in this country. Um, and <laughs> well, it's like the discs. How some of the discs essentially just act as 
the key yeah. to unlock the game. Yeah. And it's like, no, the data should be half and half. You should be depositing some stuff onto the console mm. and the disc should be helping to like well, run it differently. Al- also, what Microsoft have or Sony with their Game Pass stuff is that they have a subscription like PlayStation Now but you can download stuff and yeah, PlayStation Now is PS3 and PS4 stuff. Game Pass is starting to include new releases. Yeah. Which PlayStation Now isn't. Yeah. It's all download stuff. Yes, stuff rotates in and out, but it does on PlayStation 4 as well. Also, mm-hmm. it includes a large amount of the, of the backwards compatible 360 library and the now backwards compatible Xbox original library. Yeah. Um, so it's, yeah, Microsoft are out doing Sony on that big time. Oh. And, and well, some of the PS4 first rocked up. This, I can't remember reading that the software to play PlayStation 1 titles Apparently so, it's in is there. in there. Yeah. It's a disc reader, like a laser thingy, um, like even CDs. Like, because it first mm. brought up when people put CDs in the PlayStation 4, it was going, don't know what this is. Yeah. It was like, hang on, every PlayStation's played CDs. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh yeah, now this one's equipped for it, but it's not programmed to do the it. The thing is, a, P- a PS1 a emulator... patch could change that. You can, you can run a PS1 emulator on a fucking digital watch now. Yeah. Like, the Vita has it. Yeah. In software, the PSP had it in software. Yeah. Like it's it's piss easy. PS2, they got that they got software emul- emulation running pretty much all right on PS3. Mm. So they and they have released PS2 games on PS4, which are basically emulated PS2 games with a <laughs> with a with a trophy layer. Yeah, um, and they have said set like we're talking about four years ago. But remember, they said that they were looking into doing it where. If, You'd be able to yeah. download stuff from a service, uh, but have games from other generations. But also, if you had the disc, yeah, you could just put the disc in the PlayStation. The PlayStation would read what it is and then download it, which is what um, Xbox, which is what Xbox is doing. Does, yeah, yeah. Um, which sucks because like my my PlayStation one, two, and three library. Yeah, if I could access that on a PS4, they've got that's such amazing. a deep back catalogue. But apparently, every time someone asks them about it, they're like. Yeah, well, we've run the numbers, and it's a thing that a lot of people say they want, but when it comes down to actually people actually using it, they don't. It's like, we don't know that because you've not done it. So do no. it. Anybody do it knows. and try. Do it in a beta. Anyway, anyway. Do it, in a beta. do it in a beta and try. Also, also on February 22nd, we're getting uh, Metro Exodus, mm-hmm. which is the third Metro game, which is about um, post-apocalyptic, post-nuclear war Russia and survivors... Originally living in like the metro system underneath underneath Russia's cities, yeah, and then but this seems to be about them coming out onto the surface. And I've got Metro Last Light as a PS Plus game on PS3 from forever ago, but I haven't really played it much, so can't tell you about it. Other than they're generally well regarded, like hardcore survival shooters, nice design, um, some nice freaky mu- mutation yeah, sort yeah. of uh, things in the trailer. Um, also, we're getting Anthem, which is BioWare's next big game, co-op multiplayer. Um, online game as service, but with Bioware stuff. Looks like it doesn't have a lot of the stuff I am interested in about a Bioware game, which is not the only game, uh, the only franchise that the C3, which has seems to receive a new installment, which focuses on online multiplayer and therefore strips out the things I'm interested about. It. It looks like a a. Um, I wonder which one you're referring to it for. It look. It looks like <laughs> someone saw Warframe. Mm-hmm. And then went, mm, mm. this free to play game is 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 very good. We're going to take some of the ideas from it. We're going to make them look way less unique, make more generic, and we're going to make a game of service. But we're not going to make it free to play. We're going to make it a full price game with microtransactions. Cool. No loot boxes. But microtransactions. But you can buy cosmetics and stuff. Christ. Apparently you can't pay for power. It still doesn't solve the problem when the option is there free for yeah. the same experience. If Warframe have been doing it, if Digital Extremes have been doing it for five years on Warframe mm-hmm. and just growing and growing and growing, then EA doesn't need to do it for, doesn't need to charge full price for Anthem and then microtransactions. Just make it free to play. If you want to yeah. make a game, if you want to make a game as a service, make it free to play. Yeah. If you want to have a game with microtransactions, make it free to play. Don't charge us full fucking price for it, and then come over and then come over fucking asking for more money, or, or do what fucking Destiny does, where you release the fucking full price game, mm. have micro transactions transactions in it, and then release DLC for more money. Mm. It's like, oh, give us more money, give us more money. 
it's the it's the reason I haven't played Elder Scrolls Online yet because you have to pay for that game. You don't have to pay a monthly fee anymore, but you did when it launched. Hmm. It's gone free to play in terms of you don't have to pay a subscription fee anymore. Yeah, but you have to pay for that game, and then you have to pay for other DLCs. Christ alive! So it's if this is an ongoing game of service, then think of the possibilities yeah. and how we can add a gatekeeping price tag. To you it. either make the game free and you pay a subscription. Or you make the game free and you make your money off transa- uh, microtransactions. Mm. Games can do it. Yeah. Digital extremes saved themselves from bankruptcy and have continued to grow through Warframe over the last five years. Mm. It can be done. And it can be done well. Like, the quality of, of that game is on a par with any AAA. Uh, AAA! Um, it didn't feel right until it didn't feel right until <laughs> that. Thanks, Jim. Um, uh, it, does, it doesn't. It feels on a par with that kind of quality. Yeah. Um, and they, they release stuff so frequently. And mm. it's all free. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's so, out, it is out there. Go play it, mother yeah. lovers, But um, mm. Yeah, it just seems strange. Seems silly. Um, so Anthem, I'm not actually particularly interested in. Um, <laughs> Rage 2. I got surprise announced by that Walmart kind of leak a couple, a couple of weeks back. <laughs> and uh, Andrew WK came on stage and played one of his songs that was in the trailer for the audience and then they played an, a, a proper gameplay reveal for Rage 2 yeah and the audience barely reacted like, because so many this? of them of course are there making notes on their pads or on their on their phones of the thing they're going to write up in an who, article who later who WK instead of yeah. going oh random gig in the middle of the thing this is cool like, again Rage 2 generic post-apocalyptic wasteland shooter thing it looks fine here's the thing a lot of these are sounding so samey well let's talk about Fallout 76 like I said, a lot of these things are sounding so samey. So, <laughs> Fallout, but it's Vault 76, so it's the first vault to open after the, after the nuclear war in Fallout. Mm-hmm. 25 years after the bombs drop. And it's a always online, multiplayer focused, survival <laughs> slash building game. Yawn. Also, beyond because there's no offline mode. You're gonna have the. You're gonna have next. I would assume that you have the, uh, um, the possibility of players invading your game at any time. Hmm. You have nukes in this game, and you can just randomly nuke people's settlements and destroy everything they built. So what he's saying is, what he's saying is, I'm not interested in Fallout 76 yeah. at all. If that's the game they're pitching, and I think it is, hmm. not for me. Not for me at all. Um. Death Stranding might be for me though. This is the, uh, this is the spiritual game. follow-up to uh, what would have been Silent Hills because it's Hideo Kojima, See, Guillermo del Toro, it, I don't even think it's and that. Norman Reedus. Oh no, but I mean in the sense that that t- that team. Oh yeah, Norman went, Reedus is in it. All right, then fuck you, Konami. We're gonna go make another thing over yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. Sony are like, oh, how much do you want to make this game? Hey, have all the money you want. Just give Hi, us guys. a game. We can't wrestle Silent Hills out of the hands of your former bosses, but we can let you guys make a yeah. new thing. It looks, looks like, like we've finally got some in-game footage. It's based on the same engine as Horizon. Um, so it looks gorgeous. And it appears... It's difficult to tell, but the sort of incomprehensible trailers with babies and suits and babies inside people <laughs> and people eating babies and also there's there's <laughs> handprints on the beach and disappearing babies and rain and black sludge and Guillermo del Toro. Um, it babies? seems to be a game in which Norman Reedus... <laughs> Carries things, increasingly strange looking packages from one place to another. <laughs> and then, but then also there's umbilical ghosts that he has to hide from, maybe with a baby and an arm that comes off his. I don't know! I don't know what it is! But it looks gorgeous! And it looks weird! I don't want to play it! But I don't know what the fuck it is! I don't know! It's Death Stranding! Death Stranding, man. It's just... It is a seriously Hideo Kojima game. I'm just excited what to see what Hideo Kojima does um, sort of outside of the confines of Metal Gear Solid, the sort of prison yeah, that, he's built been, that he built for himself. Uh, um, and the increasingly incompetent wardens that run it. A bit of Japanese theme, at the uh, bit of samurai theme for the for the two platform holders this year because you got Ghost of Tsushima on the PS4 and Sekiro yeah. Shadows Die Twice on the Xbox One. Um, Sekiro is the new From Software game we were the Dark Souls guys yeah um, so it's basically the Xbox is Bloodborne um, look interesting oh also there's that yeah because when it first got because Activision are publishing it when it first uh, popped up uh, people thought Sekiro might be a Tenchu game remember Tenchu? Tenchu Tenchu Stealth Assassins on the PS1 
Jeez. That was a whole franchise. Yeah. Um, people have been have been thinking it might be that. And for a moment, before the title dropped in that trailer, I was like, fuck, is this a Tenchu game? There's ninjas. Uh, there's stealth. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, no, it's not. Yeah. But it looks cool. Um, there's another Assassin's Creed. Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Spartans. Yeah. Yawn. <laughs> um... It don't could, care. It could be good, but I mean, don't, my, don't my concern, well, I was talking about it the other day, my concern is because it is a year after Origins, which was probably yeah. the most positively received entry in the franchise in a while. Origins because seems they took to a break. definitely benefit, yeah, from be- taking a break. Because, it took a, because this is a year later, it means they're back to their old model. And it's sort of like Star Trek movies, the Assassin's That's, Creed yeah. series. Like, every other game seems to be fun or decent and every other one seems to be utter shite it's sort of so it'll be interesting to see if they break that quiz take time. that year off yeah um, take as long as you need I know I know you're excited because I am Chris but we're getting another Mario Party for the Switch Super Mario Party <sighs> ah, I hate that fucking franchise so much I hate Mario Party with the passion but we're getting one it's just but, party games right pretty much yeah, yeah. and eh. uh, and you're going around a game board and it's, it's like it's like the worst parts of a board game plus the worst parts of a mini game collection <laughs> plus Mario. Um So he's saying is Crash Bash is a better no, no it's not. Crash no, Bash it's not. Mm. no, no, no. Crash um, Bash is terrible. Yeah, Crash ba- Mario Party is Crash Bash, but Mario. Oh. I think this is the twelfth Mario Party. Oh god. Now, I know it went up to ten on the Wii U, and then there was a three D S one which I think was just the mini games. There was, yeah. a, there was a Game Boy Advance one, for sure, and there was a DS one. Why? I don't know. <laughs> well, because Nintendo had Why? to Nintendo had to fill out their Super Smash Brothers press conference with something. Um, yeah, that's true. <laughs> didn't talk about Metroid. Metroid Prime Four announced it last year. Didn't fucking talk about it this year. Fuck you. Mm. Talk a bit about Pokemon. Let's go. Looks interesting. Um, we talked about it last last week. It may it's, have sold me on the Switch. It's the I think probably sold me on the Switch. It's got the Pokeball controller. The Pokeball controller yeah, was preloaded with Mew. Whoa, what? So if you buy the Pokeball controller, yeah. Mew's already in it, and then you transfer him to your game. What? Yeah. Then you can transfer other Pokemon into there, and you can shake I it. I bet all it does is um, flounder and tackle. Probably. <laughs> um, but it's Mew. It can learn any move. Um, the, the Apparently, the, the dot of the Pokeball is like a little analog nub, as opposed to a stick. Oh, oh. So it might be a bit weird oh you had to say that might be a bit like that PSP analogue nub which is mm. or the, the the second the sort of I'm going to show you the weird second stick on the on the 3DS oh that's a that's which a stick which is like, which is like a, a little what's it um, for laptop mouse nub it's, it oh, acts as a horrible. second stick in games I, oh that's horrible it might be a little bit like that or it might be more like the, the analogue which is alright that's, yeah. that's that analogue slider's okay on the 3DS that is, a, um, that is a pretty little console you got there, Squire. Uh, yeah, the 3DS is a neat thing. And there's still games coming out for it, of course. Um, but yeah, the, the majority of Nintendo's direct video stream was at least half of it. So about like 25 to half an hour. 25 minutes to half an hour was Super Smash Bros. Yeah. Because they just... They got the guy, the director of that game and walked you through so much of the stuff they've changed. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it, I was that... The Nintendo Direct was very squarely aimed at the competitive Smash community. Yeah. Saying, look, these are the changes we've made. You can use GameCube controllers. All the characters from all previous Smash games are in this. No one's getting left out. Um, and that includes, like, characters from other companies. So we're getting Bayonetta and Klaus Drive from FF7 and yeah. fucking Solid Snake from Metal Gear Solid and Pac Man and Mega Man and Ryu. And, we've gone back, we've renegotiated yeah. all these contracts. All, They're all, all coming back for the game. 64 characters. Jeez. Entire roster. From all the previous games, and also the announced Riddler from Metroid, which people have been asking for for years. Mm. So that's sixty-five characters. Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. It's going to be Super Smash Brothers. Just enjoy. Just Super bigger. Smash Brothers. <laughs> it's going to be great. Um, apparently so. There's so much fucking stuff. I'm Spider- not going to talk about Spider-Man anything on the else. PS4. Do you want to touch on that? Yeah, the last thing we're going to talk about <laughs> before we get to Jurassic World, because I know I couldn't get away with not talking about it, is Spider-Man on PS4. It looks great. It looks gorgeous. We got an extended look at gameplay. It, we got it looks like Arkham on the move. Yeah, yeah. with a lighter yeah, tone, yeah. and that makes me really happy. Because um, that's that's one thing that Amazing Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man Two, the video games did smartly. They didn't try to even deviate from it. They just went, "We're going to use the Arkham combat scheme." Mm-hmm. 
and we don't care if it's copycat because here's the thing it works like it works really well and especially for Spider-Man oh look Batman's got a counter-attack thing above his enemy's head yeah uh, Spidey's Spidey sense is going sense, off actually. like let's react yeah so if that is indeed the control scheme of X is jump square is attack circle is like a basic web attack triangle is counter brilliant mm. yes please a thousand times yes because mm. it keeps the game flowing like it keeps everything going you can be quick and it's rhythmic his acrobatics look gorgeous. That bit where he pulls the shield off the guy from the other side of the room and yeah. then swings it round into each individual was brilliant. The fact, the fact that um, when we see the supervillains appear, Vulture falls for the same trick twice. Yeah, because he's an idiot. Yeah, he's just That's an angry brilliant. old. He's an angry old man. Um, yeah, we see Electro. We see uh, when Vulture. Electro first appeared, I was like, "Oh god, I hate the suit." And then at the end, he makes a reference to July the new suit. It's like, yeah. oh, it's part of the story. Someone's taking him out. Okay, mm. fair enough. Okay. Uh, yeah, we get Electro, we get Scorpion in his sort of Marvel Now era costume. Yeah, it looks pretty sort of, cool. Sort of Rhino. Rhino is like a, a more of a mech Rhino, but well, it's, it's definitely a, it's definitely like armor, yeah. but it but it but it bucks him up more. It's more it's like got, it's it more looks like, like it's got tech in it. Yeah, yeah, it's more like power armor than the outright mech that Ultimate Rhino is. Yeah. Um, um we've got who uh, do we list there? Scorpion, Scorpion Vulture. We've Vulture. mentioned. Electro Rhino, Mr. Mr. Negative rocks up, who so far has been touted as the main villain looks of the game. Really cool as well. Does, that looks really cool in motion. And you know they've been, you know they've been a lot of the stuff from the uh, brand new day and, and big time era. Yeah, Yuri Watanabe. Uh, they've, they've, been, they've been touching on uh, a lot. Uh, Whitney Chang is, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Um, and like, they've been touching, they've been dabbling on the stuff for a while. Um, uh, like in the last two cinema, cinematic related games. Yeah. Uh, so you can tell they've been dying to bring like you know um, Miss Negative and that stuff into it, mm-hmm. and we've got him, and there he is. But there's also another villain who may or may not. If if Mister Lee, and you know um, Martin Lee, is the benefactor of this new technology, who's the one making it? Someone appears at the end, and we can't quite see who they are. And that's is it another out. villain, or do you think it's a hero going to help him out? I think it's another villain. Because those heroes, those villains would have scattered a bit in the shop before, and if they saw like Iron Man flying in, or yeah, something, yeah, I suppose they, they'd they'd be like, oh shit! And this also looks like it's this this universe's take on on the first Sinister Six as well. Like here's yeah. five villains together. I was and like, mm, someone else. Four of these up. have been in the Sinister yeah. Six before. <laughs> yeah. Um, although because they're tech oriented, I doubt we're going to see like Craven or Mysterio or whatnot. Jim Sterling said really? on. Um, Twitter, he hopes that Mysterio is going to be like Scar- uh, uh, Scarecrow was for Arkham Asylum. Yeah. Like, we're not going to know he's in it. We might get told he's in it and that's it. And then when we actually see what he does, it's some mind fuckery oh, stuff. Scarecrow was in that first Arkham Asylum game was so good. It's amazing. Just so the three, good. Just the three stages, like, you get used to it as it goes, but that third one hits you like a ton of bricks. And they kind of failed to capitalise on it in Arkham Knight. Oh, they, oh they, yeah. I mean, they kept it going... For the next two games with Mad Hatter's stuff, yeah, and and then in the the um, DLC of Arkham Knight, Mad Hatter's one was like that as well, yeah. But yeah, they and also arguably, the, well, I think I think arguably the Joker framing device of Arkham Knight was the closest Arkham Knight got to using that style from Arkham Asylum. Well, considering they made Scarecrow the main villain, I just oh wait and changed his voice actor yeah. and just didn't use him properly. It was so stupid. It was weird. It was weird. I, I would argue that story-wise, Arkham Knight is the weakest of the four main Arkham titles. I would agree. Um, <clears throat> it's not the weakest gameplay of the four main games. That's Origins and Thousand Times. And let's talk a bit more about franchises with weak entries. <gasps> um, <gasps> Segway! Restart Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. And you know what that means? Now it's time for... How did this get made? Uh, no, we're not doing that. Oh God, yeah. uh, <laughs> um... Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Yeah. A sequel to Jurassic World. Mm-hmm. Picks up three years after Jurassic World. Yeah, after this day, um, but yeah, definitely, the, yeah. The, the, the Masrani yeah. Corporation is is currently paying out millions and millions of dollars in class action lawsuits to the survival of the disaster at Jurassic World. Um, Claire's Claire, no longer working for him. She's working for a dinosaur protection yeah, like, the DPG, charity slash organization. Dinosaur protection group. Yeah. Um, she's trying to get funding to go over and save the remaining dinosaurs on the island and remove them to some sort of nature preserve because the active volcano on Isla Nubla is about to explode. So, and then she gets uh, contacted by the Lockwood estate. It was Benjamin Lockwood, is it? 
They got, uh, they got, uh, who was who was revealed to have been Hammond, John Hammond's contemporary. Um, yeah, the guy who runs his fortune gets Claire to go and get the dinosaurs because she knows how the park works. So and she... apparently they have an island that is yeah. owned by the Lockwood Estate, like ready to just deposit them where they can be left alone. Yeah. Uh, so she, so he's like, "Look, I've got a big military out- outfit, like a big military operation, and they're going to go in and they'll round them up for you. But I need your expertise and specifically like your knowledge of the facility because your mm-hmm. handprint is the only thing that's going to get us to certain things. Oh, also, I need. Oh, please, Owen. You definitely. Yeah. Oh, yeah, p- yeah. You need to bring Owen Grady with you um, because." Save as many dinosaurs. We're not going to save every dinosaur. It's not possible. But you can save as many as you can. But Eleven please, species. Please try and save Blue the Raptor because she's the last one. Because she's the last one. Is the framing device used? She's the last Blue of her important. kind. So you'll need Owen, even though you you two had a relationship and it seems Apparently, to have again, ended. And... Not not ended badly. Just sort of ended. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> the way the, the way the dialogue makes it sound is like oh. They have that argument about, oh, no, you left me. No, no, I left you. Because you said you didn't want to come with me, and hey, then I left. Isn't all this stuff really good character building? No. 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 This movie stars no characters. But I still like Bryce Dallas Howard and Chris Pratt. That's, you know, watching it, that was the thing that hit me. I enjoyed watching those two. I like these actors. And I enjoyed these watching characters them are just, act uh, in these situations. Yeah. But I couldn't give a shit about Owen or Claire. No. Nor could I give a shit about their two comedy sidekicks. The, the two comedy sidekick characters in the DPG. Nor could I give a shit about the little girl. Nor could I give a shit about Blue. Like, uh, it was it was weird. This movie does not fix the previous movie's no. problem of lack of character. But I think it's a lot better. It's true, but it, I think that's also down to the fact that th- this movie's weakness is that Colin Trevorrow is one of the writers. Yeah. So some of that tonal dissonance from the previous movie is carrying over directly because it's the same writer director. Isn't it interesting how he's co-written it, and maybe that's where the flavors come from? Plus, the director of this one is a horror director, so visually there's a different style to the pacing. No, no spoilers. But the third act of this movie is basically a horror horror movie. Yeah, and which we'll get into in a a minute when we go into spoilers because I don't want to spend too long non-spoilery, partly because this episode is running. Way too long, and partly because the film's been because, out two weeks by the time you're yeah, listening to this. Film's been out, and also it, it's more interesting to talk about when you get to spoilers. So, general impressions of the movie, it's fine. It has big blockbuster it's... popcorn moments that work really well. It's got a few that work really well, and then end in a way that makes you go, "Huh? Yeah. Oh, that kind of ki- that kind of killed the moment." It's better than Jurassic World. That's true. It has more fun action sequences. It's sillier. Both uh, intentionally and unintentionally. Yeah, Jurassic World is more uh, coherent in terms of you go in knowing, you know full well what's going to happen in Jurassic World. Yeah. By the end, you're like, yep, everything I predicted happened. This I one, this one expect- takes some yeah. turns you don't expect, but it doesn't take advantage of how interesting they are. I think people are expecting this to be a remake of The Lost World in the way that Jurassic World I mean, is a if you look at the Jurassic structure Park. based on locations... And basic motivation of the characters, it is a remake of Lost World. I think it, t- I think it turns the formula on its head more than Jurassic World did for Jurassic Park. Yeah, that's because Jurassic World might as well have been a remake of Jurassic Park. Yeah, but not as good. But well, without the twinkle. Yeah, yeah. Without without well, twinkle. brief twinkle, and then they get rid of uh, Thingy's character. Um, oh, um, Earth and Earth Khan. Khan, Yeah, so and disappears right. again. Um, um, so yeah it's... dinosaur wise you're going to get some really cool moments with fan favourites and some we've not spent any time with one we've not spent any time with at all because it was impossible before this movie yeah um, practical effects a disappointingly small amount of practical effects yet again Apparently... even though they claimed yeah. that they were more, way more in this I think what they've done is they've done what they did with the close ups of the raptors from the last one mm-hmm which is they then CGI'd over the animatronics to blend in the. Movements. I think that's generally a stu- well, I tend to be studios yeah. first note with stuff like this because they did that with the the thing it prequel. Sucks. Oh they well, shot, well, the, yeah, well, the they thing, shot well, the, the thing whole prequel. of that. Yeah, the thing prequel. They, they just erased all of yeah. the practical effects and put the CGI. They in. shot all of it with practical, in, and then the studio was just like, "Nah, CGI it." In this movie. Oh, in Jurassic World, there are two bits where I know they were practical shots. Yeah. One is with the dying um, uh, Diplodocus, or whatever is in the first one, where they're sort of comforting it as it's dying on the field. Yeah. That is obviously practical. 
and it's great that it is because you get some actual emotion out of out of it's Howard great and, and it is. out of Howard and, and Pratt. Uh, and the the four raptors when D'Onofrio is inspecting them, they're, they're in like their muzzles. Oh, yeah. Those are practical shots, but their mouths and eyes have been blended with CGI because, of co- because people can't fucking help themselves. And that I think that's what's happened in this. I yeah. couldn't spot a single hundred percent practical no. dinosaur. In this I was movie. Th- I was thinking that towards towards the end of the movie, I was like, has any of this stuff been practical? And that takes me out of it because. Yes, this will never recapture the magic of that first and arguably second movie in terms of the visuals. It will never recapture that, but it could at least hearken to it or make you feel like that. Because I, they, you, these you movies don't feel like Jurassic Park movies. You to couldn't me. get away. Well, they're not the Jurassic World movies. Well, no, um, but you know yeah, what I mean. They don't you, feel like they're in the same series at all. I don't think people I because don't think there's too much of a disconnect. The mainstream audience would stand for seeing so little of the dinosaurs in the movies now as you see in Jurassic World oh like true true but even though I think it's a certain, better movie for that there are certain shots you could, like the, t- the T-Rex in the cage for example and this is a sequence where a sleeping T-Rex is in a cage and two yeah. of our characters are trying to get something from inside that cage I, I didn't even believe that was a practical effect no. it probably was and it should have been but like, you could see the CG there you could see the way it was breathing and stuff it was like that's animation that is animated it's good animation but like you could have done this with a practical shot or with a practical uh, effect the stuff with blue you could have done so much of that practical the stuff with the surprise edition in, in the, the last act you can talk about it and yeah also the stuff with the, the new dino like could have been practical but it's clearly CG and it would have looked lovely practical like the, the, especially in the horror yeah. stuff the way you could light that yeah. and it, it's it, the, the salt's rubbed into the wounds even more because like the social media accounts it's the 25th birthday of Jurassic Park last week yeah the social media accounts have been posted behind the scenes shots of like the half finished T-Rex animatronic in the workshop moving around in movement tests and you're like that looks amazing why don't we have that now um all in all, popcorn fun. Don't get your hopes up, but there's stuff to enjoy. Um, don't go in if you're after an exp- a Jeff Goldblum infused experience. The thing I will add he's to in, that. He's in maybe three minutes of the movie, yeah. if that. But um, probably the best three minutes of the movie. Uh, <laughs> no, because it feels like they're wasting Jeff Goldblum. Yeah, they are wasting Jeff Goldblum. It's, it's a shame. Ian Malcolm um, is a very compelling, charismatic character. And in this, he's just old man giving advice to a board of government I think that would be a pretty good job for Jeff Goldblum though it seems like he has his shit together yeah but like I'm sorry if you're going to do that if you're going to have that scene where he's like testifying to give his opinion on that what should be, be done about Grant. the dinosaurs no it's not that it should also be Alan Grant yeah, yeah. do you know what I mean and Ellie Sattler go for broke bring in Laura Dern Sam Neill and Jeff Goldblum and have them give their pieces because you know those characters would have conflicting opinions. Yeah. Even Alan Grant, after the events of Jurassic Park 3, wouldn't still just be like, yeah, let him die. Like, there'd be a conflicting yeah. opinion, and, and Ellie certainly would believe one. That, and it'd be like, these guys are the experts, because they were there at the original breakdown event, when everything went to shit. Here's what they can offer. Because you knew what Ian Malcolm was going to be like. Of course he's going to be like, yeah, they should all be killed. Let them die. Yeah. Let the dinosaurs die. I went through some shit on that island. Yeah, let and them And then die. I went through the other one. I went through some shit on that one. But it's not just dinosaurs he's talking about, and this leads us into spoiler territory. Yeah. Um, so, so, one thing I want to add to before spoilers... Yeah, Arab. ...is Ooh. that this movie has me... Not so much excited, but intrigued As to by what, where it uh, leads yeah. the franchise and what's going to happen next, which we'll talk about in spoilers. Speaking of which, let's talk about spoilers. Spoilers, spoilers, time for spoilers. If you don't um, want to know anything, go away now. So, dinosaurs are everywhere. It really is... Well, they're not everywhere, but they're on the mainland of the United States, and hmm. there's other... There's not dinos. a lot of them, but they're out there. Yeah, yeah. Dinos were bought at the auction towards the end of this movie and have been shipped out already. Uh, Doctor Wu is, of course, out there. Um, I like how he's become the series sort of like silent supervillain. Yeah, I, I, but, in I, the, I, but in this one, almost reluctant. He's like, "No, I'm doing this for the science, like not for the money." And it's like, "Mate, you're creating weapons for for evil militaries and mercenary groups." Well, we we saw of it, course this is for money. We saw it with my parents. Um, because we, we don't do often but occasionally we like to go when, we're, when we have the ch- chance we like to go to Zimmer with the parents and uh, I was sat next to my mum and towards the end when uh, when Wu's escaping she leans over to me and she goes oh, when are they going to kill that bad man? <laughs> when are they going to kill that bad man? <laughs> and I'm man? like yes mum that's wonderful yes 
Too right. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad. Someone, also, I'm glad it, someone did die in that five minute span. In in a in a genuinely is a curiously his, his nasty death is, movie, isn't it? His nasty death is fine because he was the villain and he murdered a nice character like ten minutes before. Mm. So unlike the um, Kate McGrath thing from the last one, this one was like, okay, that feels a bit more justified. It was um, no, it was Kate McGrath, wasn't it? No, that's the name of it. I can't remember. Kate, Kate's mother. Meg, McGrath. She's in. Uh, she's Lena Luther in Supergirl. Yeah, she's um, she's Lady Guinevere or whatever. I'm gonna look it up. Not Guinevere. Gonna she's uh, up. Lady some of the bollocks in thingy. This is one of the many uh, pointless characters in, in Arthur. Arthur, that's the uh, one. Merlin. Sorry, Merlin. Is it Rose? Or is it... I don't know. No, uh, her, na- her name is Kate, isn't it? It is Kate. It's uh, Irish. I'm actor. looking it up. I'm looking up. I'm looking it up. It's yeah. Kate. It is Kate McGrath. You were right. Oh. I don't know why. I, was, I don't know why I thought that was wrong. That's right. But like she had a she had a needlessly violent death in Jurassic World. Yeah, that, that sort of felt mean spirited and and, and and not like it was capitalizing on the chaos of what was happening. It, it, it left a sour taste in my mouth. Yeah. Whereas in this one, they give that moment to a character who is actually the villain of the film. Oh yeah, it's great. So you kind of go, okay, fair enough. And it is it is gross. But like we were saying before we start recording, one of my biggest problems with this movie. It's curiously buffless. It, yeah, it was it was. There was no gore in this film. Mm. There was no gore in this film. There's a little bit of the blood most, here and there. The most gore you see in one go is the T Rex getting some of its blood sampled, and that's the most gore simply because it's just the most amount of blood in one single shot, but <laughs> it's in a bag. Big old bag of blood. Big old bag of blood. I love um, it. I love. I love when they're just when they've closed the door on that, and he's like, "Tell me you got the blood," and she just holds the bag up. Yeah, she didn't say anything. She's like, Ugh. "That scene. Ugh. That scene. Like I say, I hope it was a practical T Rex, but it felt." It was. I think it was still pretty good, though. Um, that was a really nice scene, especially the bit where she's sort of straddling its sleeping head. <laughs> and for a second, Owen stops being scared and tense and serious and just can't help but chuckle to himself because it does look ridiculous. It, do, it is ridiculous. This whole situation is ridiculous. I like their relationship. They're not, they're, yeah, there's but, not but, much but, to the characters, but, it, but, but it, I like their relationship. It, that's what I'm saying. Is it because of the relationship between Owen and Claire or is it because oh these two are clearly having fun making this and their yeah. rapport is, is, is and nice because I'm of fine with people having fun making this movie because I think it was fun I don't think it was particularly good no it was kind of fine it but was, it's a lot it, of fun it was excellent in tiny doses yeah. specifically in the third act and I, I'd argue the best set piece of the movie is the end of the second act it's, it's the, the volcanic eruption itself yeah. race ball the- in that fucking scenery though Yes, Toby yes. Jones chewing that fucking scenery. Toby though. Jones chewing that scenery so much that they gave him a fake upper, like set of upper teeth to chew. <laughs> yeah, it's like just give him teeth because why not? Also, uh, have the Trump hair. <laughs> yeah, it's just so weird. It was odd, but it worked. But well, like, once the auction scene began, it was like, okay, this makes sense. This is yeah. a nasty. This is a rich, nasty prick who deals horrible things out to rich, nasty pricks. Yeah, it's great. It's um, great. It's so this this. Some boo hiss villainy in there. Yeah, especially what happens to James Cromwell. Yeah, no, always nice to see James Cromwell. Always nice to see James Cromwell. It'd be nice to have seen him more. Yeah, um, we'd also have seen him more in films prior to this. Has Lockwood been a thing yeah. in the Jurassic Park films? Nope, nope. In this movie, it's like, oh, by the way, Hammond had a silent partner, who was only a silent partner because they fell out just before Hammond went away and had Jurassic Park built. And what did they fall out over? Um, well, that's the thing. They don't make it clear, and then they suggest it toward the end. No, I think I'll state it. Oh, no, no, but I mean, like, suggest it in the sense that they don't indulge in this enough in the movie. And it sucks, because it's the most interesting addition to the franchise in yeah. this film. This movie does do something that Jurassic World also did, but it does it less than Jurassic World did, in that it has interesting ideas and fails to capitalise on them. Yeah. So... Ian Malcolm tees it up at the start of the movie where he's talking about, like, here's the thing, like, you, you know, you, you you encourage a company to play around on a genetic level to create dinosaurs. You aren't going to get competitors. You won't get people screwing around with this. We need to let this die. That's why he's like, let's let the explosion, let's let the volcanic eruption kill the dinosaurs. Let's just let it happen. Let's wipe the face of the earth, get rid of it, because otherwise people are going to come in and they're going to try and backwards engineer their own stuff by getting dino samples and yeah. things like that let them die off because who knows where that's going to lead like he, he sort of makes a, 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 a acknowledgement of the um, of the oh Christ what was it called Indominus Rex yeah. the idea that already the park was playing with genetics in a way it shouldn't have by creating a new dinosaur yeah so he's saying like you know where could that lead next that's something hinted at by the end of the movie you realise the young girl character who's James Cromwell's granddaughter whose mother 
seemingly died. Like, again, they don't explain, explain, it's all suggested. But then the nanny's like, I, I raised them, I raised both of them. And the girl finally sees the photo of her mum that's kept, the only photo of her mum, apparently, yeah. that's kept in, um, well, the only uh, photo kept, of her kept, in, kept in Lockwood's at that age. book. Yeah. And it's a picture of clearly a younger version of the nanny and what just looks like the young girl herself. Yeah. And in that moment, Lou and I watching it, we went, huh. Because it didn't cross our minds immediately what that was saying. We were like, is that a sister? Are they implying that both of them, like, she has a sister and the sister's gone? Are we going to no, get I, some... No, I, I, I well, twigged that, immediately oh, yeah, that I, she was a clone. As the next few minutes played yeah. out, we were like, what? And Lou just was like, she's a clone, isn't she? She was like, wait, what? Even, like, be- oh, God, even before yeah. that, we we worked out that it was like, oh, no, she's a clone. Oh. But that's what I'm saying. That's the most interesting addition that this movie brings what? to the franchise as a whole. What had me... The idea that Malcolm's predictions of, like, you, you know, you, you thought about all these things that you'd see, that see that you could, you didn't think whether you should. It's like, this is what happens. Yeah. Of course this is what happens. Yeah. People start dabbling in it elsewhere. But this implication is that uh, Lockwood has cloned at least once about nine years ago at least once to create the daughter um so after the event long after the event of Jurassic Park but that's the stuff that made him and Hammond fall apart it's Lockwood similar, was see, like let's develop this as well and Hammond's gone I think no. it was probably before the Jurassic Park because they've clearly oh, do you think she's been at the same age that entire time no I think she's the second version I think his daughter died yeah he cloned one Oh, that's... That one died. But again, they don't... They another. But, but again, they don't elaborate. They don't go into it. And that's what sucks, because it's like... Yeah. And to the point where it's revealed, the characters re- realise it, she says... Yeah. And then she makes a poignant decision to let the dinos escape when, when Claire had actually sort of come to terms with we need to end this all now. Because they're like her. Yeah, but she lets them go because she's like, no, they're, because like they're like me. And it's like, okay... And then that's the last the film makes mention of it. Yeah, and you're like, huh. the, thing, the thing that got are me we just going to drive away with this girl in a, in a new vehicle? Yeah, apparently clearly they just wearing clearly new adopt clothes. Her. Yeah. just adopted her. She's a clone. Maybe this should have been the focus of the story, like how things have gone away. She's an illegal life form by the laws of I think at least eight or nine states in the US. Yeah. So, oh god, it's just that's the most interesting addition, and they breeze over it. But. The fact that they can go into it in the sequel, along with dinosaurs infesting mainland America, mm. that's it interesting could be to good. Me. But I think you need a damn good like script. Yeah, to so make don't that get caught Trevor on it. Uh, the thing that intrigued me about about Maisie mm. is that there's a there's a moment early on where she she asks if her mother ever saw the park, and Lockwood goes yes, yes. once a long time ago. Yeah. So it's like the film's almost and suggesting suggesting to you. that it's someone from mm. th- it's someone which from I the which film. I hate which I hated because I was like I don't want that because then they don't, I don't want that because then they then they're hoping to have a twist that relies on you yeah. loving another movie but then they don't pay it off no so it when could, you think of the two people it could be oh it God, could only what be died? what if she died at the park it could only be sat it could only be Ellie mm. or Lex but it can't it's not be Lex because Lex, Lex is because she's related to Hammond yeah. And it's not, and it, it, and it's it could not. improbably be Ellie, mm. but the last we saw of her, she's not dead. Maybe it, also we didn't maybe know she was a random, to uh, random person putting raptors in a cage that we never saw, or who'll be digitally reinserted into the original movie, or he made his original clone at the facility on Isla Nublar. Yeah, and that's and where that the fallout when happened. The fallout happened before the original park had its test run. But again, the film doesn't even touch on it. It doesn't really. go into any of that. No. Um, um, right, we've, we've, we've kicked it down a bit for being bloodless and missing its opportunities. What stuff that works? The Indoraptor and the entire third act being a gothic horror movie in a mansion with a dinosaur on the rampage. With was a awesome. quiet dinosaur on the rampage. Yeah. Which makes it spooky. Um, the Indoraptor was... I actually really like the Indoraptor. Um, I like that it has a sense of humour. I know you didn't like this. Yeah, but I, didn't, I, I didn't like I it. But love I love the, the way it plays with the hunter. Yeah, I don't, it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't really what the, the Indoraptor did that got me that scene. It was more him. It was like really, you're really stepping in there to pull the tooth out of a live dinosaur that yeah, you just because... met, don't know what it is, and 20 seconds ago put three tranks in and noted yourself. Christ, you're tough. Like you're not going down yet. But it, it, it so is... it's like, do you know what I mean? In that situation, even if you wanted the tooth, you'd be like. I'm going to put a few more tranks in this thing before I do that. But again, I, I guess the movie doesn't do a good enough job of making this clear. He's not a hunter. 
He's a mercenary. Yeah. He's a mercenary posing. But as he's a also, but he's not. He's also not an idiot. Earlier in the movie, yet he suddenly is in that scene. He's just an idiot. It's really weird. Um, and his character again felt like they were just sort of. That was where the loose Lost World remake kind of thing came. Yeah. Because it was like, oh, this is the Pete Postlethwaite character. It's like, yeah. Oh, okay. But I do like the. I love. I love the auction scenes. Toby Jones hamming it up, having a whale of a time. Yeah. Uh, the schlock of his death. Yeah. Again, toothless, so you don't see the death, but like the way that it's like the interrupter sort of. It's a shame that it accidentally breaks it because it makes it look a bit dumb. Does as well. it accidentally break it though? It does because it turns around yeah, and but... it hits it, and then it notices the sound of the doors and it turns back oh, okay. around. And it was because like, I, oh, that's a shame. I fucking love that when it's it's lured the hunter into the cage and it does that thing where it oh, it it looks at the it basically looks at the yeah, it basically yeah. winks at the audience. It goes, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 His tail coming up behind him, and then it's got one eye open, and then it's like, oh no. It grins. It gr- well, it just looks like it grins because it's got mm. this mouth. It's got a crocodile mouth. It can't not grin. The mouth twitches um, though, like yeah. sideways. It's brilliant. I love it. I loved it <laughs> leaning into that. Um, I, it was so fun. I really. I wish it hadn't been spoiled in the trailers, but I like when it is actually in the bedroom. Yeah, that's that, really that, cool. It's paced really well, but the problem was we'd seen it. Yeah. That's the we'd problem. Se- we'd seen so much of this movie. I do I like. Think... When it, I do like when it was first glimpsed because that's the thing as well. Like this, yeah. is, the, what's nice about this is, is they make a point of this dinosaur isn't the perfect specimen this no, is the prototype, prototype yeah. and then things get out of hand like the next one was meant to be the perfect but they, one and they said and then there's going to be no more hybrids in the series which is like I think that's kind of a missed opportunity because I don't have a problem with the hybrid thing I I think that's a logical extension I don't, of where I don't, the series is I don't mind it to a degree if it means that the focus is on right we're actually now putting money into rounding up what's out there yeah. and the focus is more on the cloning aspect I wouldn't mind the lack of hybrids going forward because of that. But I, I think. But at the same time, it's also if this movie's going to be its own, tri- if these movies are going to be their own trilogy, chuck another amalgamation yeah. in the third especially one. Just don't make it a human dinosaur hybrid like all the oh no, concept art it, of the fourth do one. Do it! Do it! Do oh, it! God. Do it! Do it! All the stuff I that, all the stuff love that. that! All the stuff that really, really worked. Um. um all the volcano Let's stuff the volcano stuff not in the right. action sequence the, sh- the final the best shot of the movie actually the final shot of the island oh the brontosaurus on the dock oh so good for help as the freaking smoke engulfed it so good again annoying that they were basically relying on you to have an affection for it because of of seeing them in the previous movies and how they were used but on just a basic it, watching an innocent think, animal like yeah I don't think thing, it necessarily yeah. relies on that too much as much as like you say it relies on the fact that it's an innocent animal yeah it, you see one as soon as you possibly the same one as soon as yeah. you get onto the island um, that was another thing like, they, don't, they didn't know how to do glory shots again no, like no. just like Jurassic World they didn't know how to do shots where it was like look at this thing except when they do like that moment mm. and then there's a couple of more like um, Rexy roaring at the lion at the, at the very that's end. amazing. That's that should have been really cool. That should have been the last shot of the movie. Yeah, that's really not cool. not blue on a hilltop, roaring, no. roaring, doing a remake of the end of Jurassic World. Yeah, it should have. The last shot should have been the T Rex and the lion roaring at each other. Yeah, that was so cool. That was cool. But again, it just moves on really quickly. It's yeah. like no, like um, what a great way to end it. Did you stay for the post credits? No, I didn't know there was one. It's uh, it sort of plays it like a twist. So you see some. Pterodons. The pterodons are the ones with the. Oh, they're nesting on the Eiffel the Tower. Sort of longer. They're nesting on the Eiffel yeah. Tower, but it pulls out and it's not the Eiffel Tower. Oh, it's the, it's the Eiffel Vegas Tower one. on the yeah, yeah, yeah. strip. So it's almost like they're going, ah, they've gone worldwide. Think not so. really. And well, it's like, huh? Didn't, Tyrann- didn't Pteranodons escape at the end of three? Yeah. Yeah. Although, I suppose, yeah. it's. It's implied. Because three, three ends with a sort of. a shot. Of them in the helicopter, there's a nod to the ending of one, uh, yeah. but you see the pterodons flying as well. Oh, it's it's implied in the movie and Jurassic World, and also the PGA, the DPGA, the, the DPG website that ties mm. in with the film. There's some stuff on there that all the dinosaurs from Isla Sauna were rounded up and relocated to Isla Nublar before Jurassic World opened. Eh. So I think that. Yeah. That's what happened to the. Tyrannos. I call bullshit. There are so many dinosaurs in two and three. Well, the Spinosaurus was there. What a skeleton? Well, yeah, but it was there. As as as. Uh, uh, oh god, is that the tradition now? The baddie dinosaur skeleton appears in the next movie because yeah. we had the Spinosaurus skeleton in Jurassic World, and in yeah. this one we had uh, the Irex's skeleton yeah. on the 
God, the that mo- opening the Mosasaurus, with the the Mosasaurus, Mosasaurus must have just shat it out that, whole. That opening sequence with the Mosasaurus was pretty awesome. And it, also the Mosasaurus in the wave. That was really, that was yeah. really cool. That was the thing with me. That opening sequence was really, really good. Mm. Especially the T-Rex holding the end of the rope ladder. That was really, yeah. really scary. But then the Mosasaurus comes up for its second go and chomps the guy. That would have been more effective had we not seen it 20, se- 20 seconds ago after the, the, See, the I submarine. Know, I, think, I think that's necessary for... Cause the, well, it's implied that the Mosasaurus not... is just going, hop, hop. It's like the Pac-Man of Jurassic no, World. It's, not... it's just going... Nom, the nom, reason, nom, the nom, reason nom, that nom, that works nom, is nom, because... <laughs> if, 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 is you've set up the Mosasaurus as a threat, so it's that tension of oh, is the is the is the T Rex going to get him? T Rex going to get him? T Rex going to get him? Oh, T Rex didn't get him. Oh, surprise! But there's the Mosasaurus, yeah. but it's okay. not a surprise so much as it's been threatened. So you have that release of tension, and then immediately you get that shock. But it's not out of nowhere. I've just realised the Mosasaurus isn't mentioned at any point throughout the rest of the movie. No, it's like everyone's forgotten it exists. It escapes, and... but they, they don't know that. Like it's just out yeah. there in the world no one's mentioned know, it they don't know because, because the people who are going after the dinosaurs on the island don't care that's true that's but, not one of the species they're after no they're there for the raptors and the carnivores and all that stuff and the exciting ones um, which we were talking about for the podcast I was like this makes it look like the Jurassic World people are idiots because there's so many carnivores now yeah. compared to the original movie But then, uh, and, and you were like but of course there is because the whole point of the IREX being created as far as the yeah. park as far as the park staff managers were concerned was because people were getting bored, yeah. and it, because like, what well, the people the people who apparently save like spend their life savings on a ticket to go there yeah. are getting bored. Yeah. Fuck those guys! Basically. Lower your prices and let new people come. All, also, the, also <laughs> the, the, they were doing other hybrid stuff because there's the, the, the Stegoceratops, which is in um, in Jurassic World. They see they see like a, a preview image for it. Oh right! And the kids like that's not a real dinosaur. <laughs> It's uh, yeah, it's it's. I just like the shot of the merch. Um, and like, it's the compi. You, know, you see that compi yeah, run off. The yeah. compis pop up a bit in this. They don't get to do anything, but it's like, oh, there they are. Well, you think you think there's, that they're going to get there's, the ma- the there's the little mascots from the Lost World. You think they're going to get Ray Spall at the end, like they did in the Lost World? Well, yeah, then but, but then you see, but then you see up. the Carnosaur in the background. Yeah. And you go, oh, he's going to get him. And then Rexy pops up, and then the Carnosaur comes in, and they do a moment for what? Which is the film where it's ripped in half? Lost World. There's a bit in Lost World where oh, someone's the grabbed by the teeth yeah. and the, the other T-Rex grabs the other teeth and they rip them off. So they, oh my god, so even that cool moment was sort of a knockoff. It, it, it nicks from the Lost World pretty liberally. Yeah. Pardon me, little Trump there. That's my that's that's my rating for the movie. A little Trump. A little Trump. A little Donald. A little rocket Trump. Right, let's get into emails. Cause... Must we? Yeah. Alright. Because I want to go home. Must you? <laughs> yes. Okay. I must. Um... I'm done with this. I'm done with this nonsense. Uh, <laughs> no, He's searching I'm for the tab this. in case you want to. There we go. Um, sorry. Um, <laughs> this one comes in from Tom Mundy. Uh, dear Chris and Matt, Chris, serious moment. Oh. Chris, I wasn't aware that you were struggling with life and, and work and stuff Don't at the moment. Me. But after watching your Instagram story, I'm going to hold your hand. Oh, oh, he is as well. I was enlightened. I was enlightened. Oh, bless um, his eyes. I'm sorry to hear it. I really hope it gets better for you. I understand the entertainment industry is a tough industry to stay in. It is. Take mm. from both of us. Um, and I really hope people see the talent within you. I've seen the talent within him. It's <laughs> filthy. Dirty. I always enjoyed watching you on CBBC in my earlier days, and your work online is always a treat to watch. I'm also going through a low point. Sorry to hear that, man. I'm probably the lowest I've ever been with exams and realisation I'm probably not going to get into university if it's worth anything. So I'm kind of emphasised with you. Anyway, I'm glad you're feeling better. Um, don't worry. I know this is an empty thing to say. Don't worry about university. Yeah. Um, it's not as important as people make it out to be because it's more about the connections you have than the uh, than the degree you have. Mm. Ultimately, um, it's what you take from it yourself. Yeah. Might be that the people you meet, the stuff you absorb, seems, learnings wise, the the business contacts you make. It seems to me as someone who who did train and do a degree for the thing that you wanted to do and has since failed to make a lasting impact at it that people who just do it outside of that framework have just as much chance of succeeding so if you know what it is you want to do try and work towards it in your own way if you don't if you don't get in the university way it doesn't necessarily put you at a disadvantage yeah so the thing the thing, the thing is and the, about all these journeys is it's what you learn yeah like my intention yeah. my intention was to go to university and do broadcast i did two months of it and i was like this is way too much theory i'm not enjoying it and i left 
was fortunate enough to get a job within that industry and then I basically used that as my way of learning like I learned as much about it as I could just from it so that's the that's the key thing about like going into you know any ter- not tertiary education fourth level education whatever the hell the name for that would be yes um, that's that's the important thing don't don't worry about it too much and you know again it's an empty sentiment because it's uh, it's not an, we, we don't mean it to be an empty sentiment no it's just an empty sentiment because it's such a vagary yeah of like oh don't worry about it I, we know, both know from experience how mm-hmm. how impossible it is to not worry about it we mm. get you from that don't worry about uh, don't stop saying don't worry about it it's a it's, silly it, thing to it's, say well, thing, it's, it's that um, moment where after the moment of worry has passed you look back yeah. at it and you go why was I worrying about it yeah <laughs> so you know what I mean yeah like, so, you'll you be know, right, man. You'll be right. You'll be everything will be all right. Will it? In the end, go watch Jurassic World: Fallen Kingdom. That'll yeah, distra- I'll distract you for two up. hours. I'll cheer you up. up. I, I enjoyed it. Go watch a dinosaur um, smile. Here's some reluctance. <laughs> absorb it like the absorber off. Oh, absorbertron. Uh, thoughts on the flood from the waters of Mars? They're probably my most favouritest villain from Doctor Who. I like the flood. A sentient infection. Yeah, I I love yeah. stuff like that. I love the. The virus is the is the name that the TV tropes page gives it. Yeah, it's, it's, things like um like Ark in Space and stuff. Yeah. Where it's all about like and you know think things. It, it, technically, that was it's the women, wasn't it? But it was yeah. the, the 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 sort of thing spreads and put the, it the way, idea the idea of a ticking clock and it being viral. There's a there's a there's a the thing being my favorite movie influences <laughs> stuff that I like. Let's put it that way. Um, was it that was it the that says that it's like water is patient like water waits oh, water yeah. always, always wins. wins it's like uh, yes. which probably answers the next question oh uh, favourite bit from Waters of Mars I love the bit where the Australian guy is about to take off in the rocket and then he gets sprayed on and then as he's about to change into water zombie and just his eyes start changing colour and just before he explodes the rocket he says see you later that scene made me decide that what my last words to be see you later in the in the action have a lovely week Tom Monty and gadget, also gadget. yes Tom Monty have a lovely week gadget gadget um, Gadget Gadget um, Gadget Gadget is that it, your favourite moment no but it's one of mine um, what a wait I have two what I mean waits. I love what, so what is good. Mars is it's, it's it's hands down one of the best things to come out of Doctor it's the in, best in, of in those specials era. easily oh yeah no, absolutely of the, of, the, of the five special that is hands easily. down the best one um, it's got some really good moments I love what is Mars actually um, I love the bit where he, he first like gets in there and he starts to realise who they are and he's geeking out over these people because it shows that love the Doctor has for history and for exploration and people like him in yeah. different places and especially his love, love you, human, humans and humanity and like, oh my god, look what they get to do. And then the dawning realisation as he's nerding out over, hang on, it's this crew. They're here. I have to go. It's just like, oh, like this is, no, this is a p- important moment and that obvious thing on his face of this is an important bad moment that has to happen and he's like I've got to leave now not because he wants to save his own neck because mm. he's like I can't because he knows if he stays there he's going to want to try and stop it and he shouldn't because this is one of those somewhat established in the Russell era that then sort of gets chucked away in the Moffat era it's a fixed point like certain things that have to stay the same yeah to, so as to not irreparably damage the future going forwards um, and then the tail end of that is really powerful as well the idea that um uh, oh, I can't remember the oh, character's name. Captain. Oh, oh uh, yeah, I know you. I know what you mean. Uh, like the, the fact that her death is a key thing, and then you realise after they get back to Earth, and he's like, "I've saved, I've saved some of you. I've saved you. It's fine." The thing that actually was key stays the same because she yeah. kills herself, knowing she's not meant to be alive. Yeah, and then that inspires her granddaughter, uh, her daughter or her granddaughter to go into exploration stuff originally it was because she wanted to find out what had happened to the crew Mm -hmm. and go up there and find out what became of of, you know of her relative in this instance it was inspired by because she wanted answers for how she got home so it's still like the the sequence that needed to happen still ends up happening albeit from a different way did they ever explore that character no, which I think is I think is better. The fact yeah. that she's just in there. Yeah. I know, I'm trying to remember the actor's name. I bloody love her as well. Lindsay, Lindsay Duncan. Duncan yeah. um, I met her briefly and told her, like, I, I only very briefly sort of had the chance to say something 
nerdy you know complimentary because we were just in we were, we were both at a show we were at a preview uh, showing of a, of a show in London and um, I think we'd both been asked to hold someone's drink uh, for a moment and we just ended up nattering <laughs> and she was asking me and she started asking me some questions about CBBC so I was like oh she's watching my and as she was asking me that a voice in my brain went that's Lindsay Duncan I was like oh shit it's Lindsay Duncan yeah. and a very brief like, we were talking about TV stuff and, and whatnot and the other um, and I, I don't, I'm not sure how but I very briefly mentioned Waters and Mars and said I like, absolutely adore that and she yeah. was like oh thank you very much and then we both got whistled away different conversations but I just thought yeah. oh wow so the fact that I can't remember the character's name is really bad it'll, it'll come to me but I, I like the fact that that main for that, Adelaide? that special Adelaide Brooke yeah that's it I like the fact that there we go hey whoop whoop Oh, I like yeah. the fact that for that that wasn't a high five he just slapped me I like the fact right on his buttock which incidentally is also on my face hey, hey. Um, I like the fact that that story like the companion for that story was someone older than the doctor's like perceived age and, and, and yes. mentality and she was absolutely badass yeah that's Waters and Mars is great Waters and Mars is really good it's so so good it's so just good. that visual of the water just constantly dribbling out of the people infected <laughs> by it that's design and... I love it Oh, ah. oh oh yeah but and Bowie Base 1 Bowie Base 1 yeah. like it's named after David and just so good and then that really creepy nice lead into the finale yeah, yeah. the Ood appearing and so Ood Sigma like just sort yeah. of this vision and it's and the Doctor realises that he's he's fucked up He's being called back to the youth sphere. His song is ending. He is fucked up and also fucked. Yeah. Both it's great. Things. It is great. Um, Wars Mars is so good. Next one comes in from George. George. Uh, he says, George. He's the man this. in the gorge. He, he's moved into a shack, but it's not as large. 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 Uh, small He's, he's asked me gorge. to read this in the voice of Donald Glover's Lando Carisian, but I don't want to be... I don't want to do vocal blackface. I think read it with as much casual um, uh, swagger as Donald Glover's Lando Carrizzi and you'll get away with it. Uh, greetings, bananas don't cry. A lot has happened since my last email. The main thing, I've been able to see both Solo and Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom in the last couple of days, so sorry for following unnecessary ramblings about my opinions, but... I went in solo with... He's literally leaning back on the chair, no looking like he's playing Sabacc. Expectations. <laughs> he's but just was chilling. pleasantly surprised by how good the film was, especially after all the news came out during production, as well as the countless times in the podcast you both have shown reluctance for this film. Overall, the film was far from the near-perfect Last Jedi. Sorry, Chris, but I agree with Matt. That's fine. But it's far better than the low points of the series. Attack of the Clones, anyone? Yep, worst one. A lot of fun and more of young Han and Lando on various misadventures. <laughs> I was also impressed by how Jurassic World was so different from how I expected it to be. I went in expecting a ringing pile of Spinosaurus shit, but instead... <laughs> nice description! found a surprisingly enjoyable and unexpectedly dark at points movie that does manage to shift focus away from the park. Who knew? I wanted a dinosaur animal rights movie with a rather depressingly toned down Jeff Goldblum. Not me. Where will it go next? Who knows at this point? Uh, sorry about all the waffling, but now on to my unnecessary questions. Recently, I've been filling in the gaps in my classic collection of TV's John Nathan Turner's BBC's TV's Doctor of Who. I know various stories of Doctors 1 and 4 and have a complete collection from Keeper of Track and up to twice upon a time. Poor me. I have no life. <laughs> what is your guilty pleasure episodes from Classic and New Who? Mine would be Paradise Towers and Husbands of River Song. However, both are even better whilst under the influence of alcohol. <laughs> Drink responsibly, kids. Have you seen any of the Doctor Who era reviews on Clever Dick Films' YouTube channel? Mm. If not, they are very well made in-depth essay videos on each specific era of the show. They even have some facts that you... Might not know, but probably already do. And Chris, do you know if Crystal will ever release the final part of the Stephen Moffat interview <laughs> series? As I found she asked him a lot of the questions, I've always been desperate to know the answers to. Ugh. Now, I need to know about the problems with the Capaldi era. Curse you, Moffat. Sorry for completely wasting your time this week, lads, and I can only apologise for the length of my email. I hope you both have a splendid week, you... Big damn boys, and until next time, goodbye. 
My dear is <laughs> George. Just just for me, straight up impression, just tell me that I might want to book a lot, baby. Book a lot, baby. <laughs> There it is. Um, that is a lot of questions from George. Uh, let's let's bisect. Um, Thank you for email, George. Guilty yeah. pleasure episodes from classic and new who. Ooh, how about you? Uh, Leisure Hive. Really? Paradise Towers as well. Um, which one's Paradise Towers? Paradise Towers on Richard Burton. No, Paradise Towers is the one with uh, Richard... Uh, Richard Burton. Richard... Uh, what's his fucking name? From uh, Richard Briars. Briars, that's yeah. the one. Uh, Bill um, High for Happiness. Yeah, I, you know, that one's a bit of a guilty... That series is terrible, but that one's a bit of a guilty pleasure. Because <laughs> it's just so weird. Yeah, I mean, cannibals. Cannibals yeah. try Cannibal to eat Mel. Who then get eaten by the sink. Yeah. Like, it's of odd. course. Um, <laughs> Invasion of the Dinosaurs is a guilty pleasure. Uh, Claws of Axos. Is that guilty pleasure? It's a bit crap, in it? Let's be honest. It's a bit... It's a, it's a, it's a low-budget life force. Um... A lower budget life force, I should say. Oh my god. Uh, time flight is a weirdly guilty pleasure. <laughs> because how Ainley got away with doing that, I don't know. <laughs> and and it's really fun to watch that, that crew, <laughs> crew member who's clearly just crushing on the Doctor. Yeah. Like the way he's he is around him, it's just like that actor. If he hasn't consciously played this uh, as somebody who fancies the Doctor a bit, I'd be very surprised. Um, um, I should think of the guilty pleasures. What about mo- new series? Modern ones. I mean, Love and Monsters. I know people don't like it, but I, I I do. I don't think it's brilliant, but I do really enjoy it. It pants. Yeah, but I enjoy it. It's shit. Justifying that it's a guilty pleasure. For yeah, me. true. Aha! True. Um, oh god, what else? Uh, I can't think of any really. I was going to say Voyage of the Damned, but Voyage of the Damned isn't regarded as that. Like, it's got stupid moments. The angels rising him up at the end of that weird Christ <laughs> moment is pretty terrible. But Voyage of the Damned, apart from that moment, it's really enjoyable. Yeah. yeah. Um, most of the, most of like the bad new who I just don't like. I don't take any guilty. I don't take any pleasure from it, guilty or otherwise. Um, yeah. I'm trying to think of anything that's a bit crap that I really enjoy from the new, from New Who, and I'm coming up short. Oh, Robots of Sherwood. Yeah. Now you, do you know what? I, it is a bit I really like that because it feels like a family show. That yeah, episode. yeah. Like for one episode, it feels like a family show, and it loses its edge because of the bit that was taken out due to the news at the time. There'd been uh, yeah. beheadings and ISIS stuff, yeah. and so the sheriff of Nottingham originally was beheaded to then reveal he'd already been turned into a robot, which would have made it even more schlocky. Yeah. But then they take that out, so he just like falls into the vat or whatever, mm-hmm. and that's it for him. And then on the DVD release, because they, they took it out because it was very recent news. Yeah. Then on the DVD release, it was basically confirmed that oh yeah, the original version is never going to be used because I guess they just decided oh, that's it. And typical BBC. Someone probably just deleted it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it's so like, we were oh. past that BBC. And it's like no. no. But you know, Robert Sherwood's a lot of fun again because it's like oh, Clara's got some character. We suddenly find out something she yeah. likes. It's a completely different character from any other episode she's in. But and the, do- it's a and the Doctor's a moody little git, and it's kind of fun because it's, it's a bit, the, the spoon it's a bit fight. Malcolm Tucker and stuff, and yeah, the spoon fight and the, and the terrible <laughs> argument in the cell, and like that stuff. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Robot Sherwood. Robot Sherwood. I'm sure it's a pretty guilty pleasure, um, and a guilty pleasure that is not good by any stretch of the imagination, but it's fun to watch, especially drunk, and you have to go on YouTube for it. Is Dimensions of Time? Oh God. <laughs> Oh god! It's terrible, but it's so much fun to watch when drunk. All together now, madam. What, what year is this? <laughs> so good. Two thousand thirteen. So that the Doctor and Ace put in a trap, which means that like he keeps d- different parts of his timeline. He keeps reemerging in different parts of his timeline. So that makes sense why he's changing incarnation. Yeah. But the companion randomly changes to different companions. Yeah. And it's like. Huh? And they're all completely up to speed with what's happening, so it's not even implying that they've been plucked out of time. So nope. like, what is going on? Nope. Why is this happening? Oh, oh it's man. so dumb. Um, and, then there's the, and then there's the bit at the end, like, at Greenwich and stuff with the, um, with the, the, the TARDIS and the bringing it appears briefly, and and Leela appears briefly and stuff, and la la, and the bad dubbing, it will explode. And they're just like, what the fuck is going on? And it's still the best thing ever shot there. Uh, Thor the Dark World doesn't hold a candle. <laughs> Yeah. 
Um, um, what else? What else? Uh, else? Clevernick films. Never seen them. No, I have to look oh, it up. Oh, might check them out. I'll tell you which Doctor Who um, reviews I do like. Uh, D. Amanda Hagen used to do them. She doesn't do them very often, but uh, her Twatty Who reviews are very good. Twatty Who reviews. Twatty Who reviews. Like, um, she loves, prefers the classic era. Who doesn't? Hates the new era. But hates the new era. Who doesn't? But the reviews of the new era are that entertaining because of how much they dislike it. That it's like, this is fun. Cool. Um, and uh, and and also, there's a YouTube channel called Official CDJ is soon going to be posting like season by season reviews. Oh, starting, okay, right. Starting I'll definitely the have first to check half of season. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I don't know what okay. that's about, but yeah, it's probably fun. I imagine. Cool. Yeah. Um. F- uh, what was the other one? Uh, Crystal, is she going to release that final Moffat interview? Uh, I am not Crystal's representative, nor do I work for BBC Studios or BBC Worldwide, so I'm not sure why you think I would know the answer. But I will say this. Out of my experience of working for the BBC and occasionally for BBC Worldwide, if there is a reason it has not been released yet, and this is, I believe it's like nearly a year since it yeah, should have come out, it'll be for a really stupid reason that is probably out of the hands of Crystal and the fan show team. Mm-hmm. Um, it'll be for a really dumb, stupid reason. Uh, I wouldn't hold your breath that it would ever appear. And I also would encourage you to not ask them when it's going to show up. Because chances are they know or don't know and can't tell you anything and it's probably a question they're sick of getting by now. Well, they should have fucking released it then, shouldn't they? I don't think it's down to them. I, oh, think, it's, yeah. I, think, I think it'll be down to people above. Because yeah. that's how this stuff works. Because it always is. And they're um, always... It's always it's always silly. That's just how that's how that stuff works, unfortunately. But um, I'll say this: if it never emerges, uh, like ever, then you can be damn sure that someone will probably parody what it would have been like. So <laughs> there'll be a version. Uh, and also, just before we go, thanks to all the people who liked our tweet saying send your emails and tweets in and didn't send any tweets in. Yeah, lots, Cheers, of, guys. lots of lovely responses and reactions to stuff this week that never... <laughs> <It's fallen laughs> but that's fine, because you, you, you have a home, adorable cats, a lady and food to get home to. I do, and um, I was going to plug tomorrow's stream, but it's not tomorrow. It'll be yesterday when this comes out, so that was... <laughs> It'll have been in the past. Uh, hey! <laughs> Well, if you ever well, want to catch our streams, big damn stream on Twitch. Twitch.tv yeah. slash big damn stream. Matt will be backlogging again uh, as of just before this and, and going forward yeah. more stuff. Uh, I'm going to be streaming a bit more now that my laptop's back and running, although I've got, I've got to find like WavTap or one of those bloody audio channels yet that works. Yeah, because you've got a Mac that refuses to just do things. It's so weird. Um, but it's, but it's also But it's also Macs running... Macs never get viruses. Nothing ever goes wrong with Macs. That's not you, by the way. That's just other Apple people. I mean, that is a good impression of me in general. <coughs> I do say those things whilst doing other things that aren't Mac related. <coughs> would you like an ice cream? My computer <coughs> doesn't get viruses. <coughs> my Mac doesn't get ice creams. <coughs> you can put ice cream in my Mac's disk drive and it'll still work perfectly. It'll even install Gary's band from a Magnum stick. What the hell's a magnum stick? A stick that comes in a magnum. I d- oh, right. <laughs> oh, my God. I thought it was like a USB. No, no. I'm so- we're talking about ice cream. That I think I think Zebedee was right. I think it's time for bed. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Big Dumb Stream over on Twitch, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, bongo. Next week, keep it on Twitter at Big Dumb Cast to find out what time the stream will be going out next week for episode 104, aka our second birthday. Get in touch. Let us know what you thought. Jurassic World, if you've seen it since, send us a bunch. Do you know what? Sod it. I'm opening the floodgates. We are welcoming questions to reluctantly answer next week. Get them in. Just do it. Because you're not going to be able to hold yourselves back. Right? Always, you're not going to be able to resist. We always welcome questions to reluctantly answer. About Doctor Who. Yeah. But feel free. Look, we've This taken... is not a Doctor Who podcast, but we do talk about Doctor Who. From team to team. Yeah. Um, from sea to shining sea. Um, so get your questions sent in and just don't 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 be dicks you know what I mean like yeah, go out into the world and, and be good people and don't don't hound Kelly Marie Tran off Instagram you cunts yeah don't do that you arseholes and, and don't don't um freaking don't don't freaking don't 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 do that you know what I mean don't do it don't don't even try and just don't adapt any more Alan Moore works into live action <laughs> Or animation, for that matter. I'm not going to make that a solid rule. Leave them in their original context. They work so much better. Yeah. 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 We've learned a lot this week. I've learned a lot. I've Lindelof. All right, I'm finishing it there. 
It's lost. Can't. I can't. Hey!